I promise you it was the size of a fucking two liter with a you, tail. You said Shaq's face. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not well, over that yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> I want you to put your hands together. There goes the neighborhood. And welcome to the stage. Big round of applause. There goes the neighborhood. Welcome back to the Smokescreen Podcast, episode 76, and I think we're going to wrap up the uh, <laughs> the James Trilogy here. Yes, sir. The uh, <clears throat> Addiction, part three. I think we're going to put a, put a bow on it today. Put a bow on it, and yeah, I think we're pretty current. You got pretty current um, yeah. within a couple years, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly. But um, yeah, I mean, real quick before we get started, we got yeah. a new lord. We do. I'm got so a new excited. lord, new channel member, Lord, who's now yeah. can watch overtime our our little separate podcast for mm-hmm. members only. Jeb Jenkins. Jeb Jenkins. Thank you so much, Jeb Thank Jenkins. You. Jeb has been around for a long time, long time supporter of the channel, but joined the channel this time as a lord. Really appreciate it. Yeah, really. Hope uh, hope we don't let you down. I I, I <laughs> think you'll like the overtime. No. They're fun. And, uh, They're we'll come fun. up with some other cool stuff, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, just a quick reminder, if you want to support the podcast, join us on Patreon. Uh, and then as a channel member, either way, uh, those levels are kind of worked out to be the same. And you, at the Lord level, you get to see our overtime little after show, basically, another 20, 30 minutes. And it don't have to be about the same topic, by the way. We, we, we talk about all kinds of shit. Yeah. So. But, um, uh, yeah, so last two were the whole saga of addiction and James's personal story and it got long. So this is be probably the finale here. Yeah. And, uh, I was thinking about it. I, I was like, damn, James, you drag out a story, yeah. <laughs> but you know, this is about no, 15 no. years in the it's, making. It's a long story. It's I mean, wild to think about. There's a lot to say and lots you, you need to get off your chest. Is there a way we could get, uh, me some bigger headphones? I look at these videos and my yeah. head looks fucking yeah. huge. I, want, I need some like the size of catcher's mitts. So my head you looks can't, we can't order right. Yeah, we can order larger headphones if you'd like. For Dude, sure. It reminds Actually, me. I got a I got a pair that came with that keyboard, but they're not bigger. They're in a box deal somewhere. I don't even know what brand it is. When I you know, know I do it. those groundhog day things. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I I used to I still try to, but I used to try to get gifts for everybody. Right. To um, you know, help us a memento for whatever year it was, mm-hmm. and on the thirteenth one, I got us all little hockey masks for Friday the Thirteenth. Right, right. And we took a picture, and mine was like right here. <laughs> it looked like I got one up there. You want to put it on, dude? Seriously? No, we, <laughs> come on. Because oh, you'd, you'd have to take off the hat. Then we, 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 yeah. yeah, hell, then I would look like Jason <laughs> fucking Voorhees. Little strags, strings of hair sticking oh, up. Shit, but dude, perfect. Um, <laughs> no, my buddy Skip was like, "Why is James's mask so small?" And he knew what he was saying, the fucker. <laughs> yeah. And then a little bit later, uh, we're sitting in there, and he's like. Can we all talk about the elephant in the room? And <laughs> nodded at me, and I'm like, "Fuck you, no. call me elephant." Oh shit! And it re- and also, um, do you remember the story I was telling you? You remember Mike that did my 40th roast? Oh yes, yes. Fat, bald, and gay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was basically the roast. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> there we were at his house drinking one night, and uh, I remember he was turned talking to his wife, and he turned back around, and me. Chris and Ken were all sitting there, and we all have pretty sizable heads. Yeah, <laughs> sizable. He turned around and was like, "Holy shit! I thought uh, Mount Rushmore was in my kitchen." <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. And so I think of those two moments. Uh, yeah. And then I look at these videos that when I watch. I don't them, think it looks odd. I mean, I'm we're looking at the screen here, you're, you're um, like freaking Beetlejuice. But on I mean, Howard if Stern. you want to, if whatever makes you feel better, we can order some bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> my headphones take up half of the <laughs> screen. I mean, but you could get least some. Your with, face looks you could get smaller. Some with bunny ears and shit. And Dude, I might need to do something. You could do something cool. Damn, with it. Put a damn hood on or something. You can get. You can get all kinds of. There you go. We can put up our our hoods. I mean, I got my hat on backwards. We can, we can do it. Yeah, let's go Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, that'd be cool. <laughs> Fucking full Jedi robes. 
But anyway, I think you guys, um, I, I do want to, I do want to say a couple things about last episode, and you know, one in particular, one thing I said that I think I need to really um, not correct, but explain a little bit more, because it was pointed out to me that. Do you remember when I said I was dating the girl who was in the medical field mm -hmm. and I felt like finally there's some uh, there's somebody who cares about me and who will listen to me and help me get help right. and I said who may maybe she could write me a script or refer me somewhere right S it was pointed out to me that I said, when I said write me a script, that possibly people thought I meant opiates. Oh, oh, and yeah, yeah. I would never, that was no, no, what I meant, no, I didn't even mean write me subutex because I was already taking that. Right. Even though I was getting on the street and that would have helped me based on what my primary was saying. No, I was thinking. Somebody in the medical field may have access to research that's better than Google. You know what I mean? And so that uh, there could be another prescription to help me get off of this. Uh, it was just uh, yeah, any yeah. kind of shot in the dark. I was willing as right. long as somebody would listen to me and try to help me. But by no means was I thinking, because I, I would hate if she ever m made it through this series and watched it, which I can't imagine she could start this and finish it i can't imagine that i think she get to a point and go wow that was too much but yeah i would never want her to ever dream that i was thinking that I, yeah like no. like you're saying like for her to be your new contact yeah Ooh, i hit the up. jackpot yeah you know? and she can write me a script yes. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah no lord no that yeah, and, yeah. and i'm glad that was pointed out to me no i never so thought i, I never thought of it that way but good no, I, I see what you mean though yeah yeah. Um, so that was that was really the main thing. And then another thing is I think the way we ended the last one and I was talking about my friend passing away. Yeah. And 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 I, I don't know that I gave that its proper oomph. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was at the end tucked away like that. But yeah, if you watched part two and um, you know, when I discussed have hitting what I called rock bottom that time, you know, uh, the, the girl who taught me the bioavailability and all that, a good girl I went to the prom with and everything. Yeah. She did pass away a couple years ago. And, um, that was heavy. I yeah. mean, this girl, even at her lowest, we wouldn't talk for months and I would get a message, you know, on Facebook messenger that would say, you know, James, you better be writing your book. You know, you're so smart and you have yeah. such a story to tell and, and I'll kick your ass if you don't and all this, you know, and the kind of encouraging things, even when she's at her lowest, because I could never imagine the lows that that girl Dude, has been through. Speaking of that, just a little quick side, mm -hmm. you need to write your fucking book. Thank you, man. <laughs> you, you, you need you've to finish. Been that. In my life too, just, yeah. just so no, you know. No, I'm not trying to steal that. No, I'm you're just not. You do. But, but you, you absolutely, you have always, you know, threatened to kick my ass <laughs> and shit for not doing that. <laughs> you and gotta, dude. You, I mean, look, it, no book's gonna be a bestseller first one you write. That's but it, right. It's a good. It's good stories, and everybody has a story. And this is another whole chapter or more. More. I mean, whatever you yeah. think it needs to be, but yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, and honestly, this, I, where I'm going today is it would definitely be a good chapter. And I don't, and, and one thing I want to point out to you guys is I don't, the, the irony is not missed <clears throat> on me that we talked about shame and how, you know, shame's important and everything. Yeah. And here I am talking about these things that are, that should be, I should be ashamed of. And I, am ashamed of so just because i talk about them so matter of factly yeah, do yeah. not think that i'm not ashamed literally i don't think i'm cool at, at all I, I think i've always and you know this chris i've talked about if i ever get over this i want to help people 
Yes, 100%. And you and I, we've talked about, this has been on the back burner for a long time. And the reason, I mean, it's always been there. We always talk could talk about it. But the reason is because of the guilt I felt. Because I don't want to come on here and be a phony and and act like I got everything figured out and knowing that this is still a struggle. And I don't I don't know how long the struggle's gonna last. I, I, you know, this is so weird. So that's I'm just wanting to open people's eyes and say this is a terrible thing. It should not only live in closets and you know what yep. I mean, back alleys. It it really we need to put this out in the open. You need to be able to go speak to your kids and your loved ones about this, and they need to feel like they can open up to you and not, you know, not be ostracized. Yeah, this the stigma needs to go away. It uh, it does. It, I mean, this is uh, like you've seen the comments the last two videos. Uh, I mean, everybody, every single comment is is positive. And a lot of them are very similar as far as the comments. You know, this is what I went through, too, and I appreciate That's you opening up and all that stuff. And so it, it needs to be a thing. That's why we were saying, if you share any podcast, share the last two in this one, this is this complete story, this saga, so to speak. Yes. it needs to be talked about. And I'm proud of you guys that have opened up in those comments. God bless you all, and um, hope you find what you need, and hope you have found what you need. <clears throat> but I'll say this, Chris. I, I don't know. You know, I, I've gone down some conspiracy type rabbit holes and mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm a little surprised at the numbers of these videos. I don't know. Somebody mentioned about this thing getting throttled. In yeah, the I'm, I'm not. It's, it's so odd. How do we not even get 1% of our subscribers? Uh, it's really odd because look at what's happening. The exact same. I was thinking the same thing. It's always been weird with the podcast. So, and I know it doesn't fit the niche of the of the channel or whatever, but that's changed so much anyway. But even if they clicked on it, didn't like it, and clicked away. Yes. And here's the thing in the it middle, show up. in the middle of like all this growth, right? We've had this tremendous growth. We're so proud of it. We got the yes, button sir. up here. I got another one over there. You got your button. We got 108,000 as of yesterday. Yes. You know, we're getting another 8,000 since 100K. Because I'm putting out the Shogun videos, they're doing so well. Our or making a murder true crime stuff does so well. And, and in whatever it is about those topics, there's a lot more subscribers and views and, you know, more subscribers per thousand yes. views or whatever, you know, if you go into the analytics, but we still lose when we upload a podcast, not necessarily the podcast itself, mm -hmm. they'll still gain a, tr a few, but, the channel overall, somebody like I, when I go look at the analytics, they people apparently again, again, it's whatever's actually going on, will click unsubscribe on the channel page, wow. not the video watch page. Yeah, and they're not so, getting anywhere close to true crime, making a murder, convicting no. murder, Shogun. We have a couple of those videos that are eighty thousand now. And yeah, the, and the, here's the podcast looking. getting like fifteen hundred. It's yeah. so odd. And dude, these in particular. <clears throat> Like you said, you got we've got 108k now. Yeah, uh, 1,080 would be one percent, and neither of these. And not I'm not owed of you. Believe me, no, yeah, I yeah. get that this might not be your bag, but I can't see that one percent's not curious, right? And no, and so it's, I think it's very odd. Um, is this? A sign that people are fed up, they're, they're, that, that they don't like thinking about the opioid epidemic or, uh, you know, because I get it. A bad experience with this yeah. could turn people off. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think it's that. Like you said, there would be clicks and you would see unsubscribes and stuff on the video page. Yeah. I think it, you know, something maybe with the keywords and cause it translates everything we say, all the key, you know, those keywords, opiates and certain drugs you're mentioning and all those type of things. It maybe has something to do with that or, or maybe it's just not, I don't know. It's very odd. We're not, I haven't really broke down the traffic or anything, but, uh, it's, 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 it's very odd at the same time as all this growth that these don't get seen, you know, right. but then I'm putting out tomorrow, right? I, I released this on a Tuesday 
or a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But right now, Tuesday is also Shogun, and it skyrockets. Yeah, they they get great yeah. views, and I'm excited about that for you because, <laughs> man, I would feel like an albatross dragging this out three episodes, and they can't even get no. But you know, hundred views. You know how it's always been and too with the podcast. We'll have like you know Bob Lazar. We've had some big ones. We have, and uh, but we have these other ones that are just like. Seven hundred views, even not. I That's think what this, my, episode one seven hundred. It's right really now. odd. Yeah, I hadn't even looked. Episode last two couple was days. like five hundred or something. And yeah, it's really odd. I mean, I half of one percent. I don't know. I don't know. What so, else. I don't know. Since the last episode, because we had that plush thing, uh, oxycontin yeah. plushy yeah. out here, I I went and watched Painkiller. It's yeah. a it's an epi it's a series. I can't remember how many episodes, maybe five or I six. Need, I need to watch that. I've got to say <clears throat> there is a man in there. They follow his story. He got hurt at work. And I love Dope Sick. Um there's somebody who has followed us for years, gave me that book. Yeah mailed it to me and then the show came out with michael keaton fantastic show but on this painkiller series there is this man who has a family he gets hurt at work and i'm telling you it made me cry watching his it it felt so similar to yeah. me and you see these comments have you seen the ones where it's like it's like he's saying my story yeah, yeah. that's the way i felt watching that. right I'm telling you, they nail it. It's the best thing I've seen that reminded me of my own experience on film. Yeah. So yeah, watch. I mean, you can see in our little world with the comments, nobody's alone in this. Nobody's, nobody's alone. Nobody. So there's no need to hide a, hide in the closet about and it. It makes me feel good that they feel open enough. Yeah. Because people recognize usernames. That's right. And they're and there's people that's been around for a long time. Space. Yeah. So that made me. That makes me feel good, regardless of the amount of views. The quality of the interactions here has really yeah, and, and the me. point is not just the for views. It's the idea That's right. is you know you know of course we all want views on, but this isn't an, if you want to pick any podcast, we we just have most of our podcasts are just fun talking about random shit, whatever documentaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but this is an actual important one, <laughs> and you want it, you want the story to get out there and you know, some possible resolutions and, and open up a conversation for people. And maybe it has for those, you know, 700 That's people right. or whatever. Yeah. But it's uh, really odd, man. I don't know. And if those 700 have conversations with people and then they have yeah. conversations, hopefully it just starts some conversations happening. Yeah. Because um, – I, I will say real yeah. quick on the YouTube thing, though, it's – when I started, that was a big thing, right? You could tell a channel's – popularity and growth by um i used to have more views than subscribers per, on average per that's video that's right. right i remember those and days and that definitely changed over the last 8 years i've seen a lot of huge channels that get 5 or 6000 views on a video when it used to be you know 100,000 200,000 mm -hmm. so that's there's just so much more stuff out i don't know what's changed it the algorithm wild. it's really odd yeah if you had 10,000 <laughs> followers, subscribers, yep. you're going to get the views of, of most of those 10,000 plus 10,000 people who aren't subscribed. It used to be used that to way. be that way. Yeah. But now because of what's fed to people, that's part of the re and probably the main reason. I, I don't know, but it's the problem with AI. I'm putting out me. Shogun videos and it caught this audience, you know, this new audience's attention and they're mm -hmm. doing really well. But then I put out the same day or the next day and it's labeled addiction, the smoke screen podcast. They're not even seeing that. They're that not, is wild they're, they're to not, think. They're it? not even. They're, you know, it used to be a subscription feed. That's right. So if you subscribe to smoke screen or the smoke screen podcast, over on the it's, right, it's all going to be there in order. That's right. Now it's fed to them even on that subscription tab. So they're the people that are just watching Shogun, for example, are not even no. Don't even know we have a podcast. That's pretty Except wild. Except for to the think. fact that I mention it in the video. Yep. So uh, I have done that. That's pretty wild to think about. So remember that too. Yeah. It's not pushed to be to anybody. Because honestly, if you want to get to Noah, I cannot get any more raw right. than this. And and I've always been open and transparent and everything, but this is it. This is to my core. 
I'm spilling my guts out here. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, I can't I can't sit here and lie and say that I'm not disappointed that I can't even get a thousand views yeah. when there's a hundred and eight thousand subs. That's right. That should be seeing at yeah. least it's, seeing it's it show up on I've their actually, feed. you know, being as excited as we are about 100k and all that, it doesn't make you instantly make money or any no. of that stuff. And I've, I've looked at other channels, and there's a lot of them, very yeah. similar situations. But hitting that milestone had yeah. a lot to do with me saying, "Okay, now's the time." Yeah. I, I feel like I'm not going to drag it down. You know what I mean? We're we've we've made that milestone, so me bringing this to the table is not yeah. going to be a big turnoff. Um, which I have found with the 600 people who watch that they're not turned off by this. They really appreciate what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. And all I would like is with what you said, if anything comes of this, it be maybe I throw one or two little things out there that help you look at it differently because I know what it's like. I watch podcasts. Mm -hmm. If, if, if there's somebody that I watch, you kind of are invested in these people. So I know that people do get invested in us. And if, and if a person I watch was telling some of the things I'm telling, my ears will perk up. I may listen more than I would just some random uh, show on the news. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That you might listen a little more intently. Yeah. And that's all I'm hoping is that then you can take that from some of the things I'm saying and whether it's happened already or it happens in the future, you've got it filed away oh, to go, okay, maybe I need to be a little easier on this person. And listen, <laughs> I do believe in tough love. I know I've mentioned being easier on people. Oh, yeah. But I, I do believe in tough love to a degree. I don't believe that the answer in, in this situation is uh, turning your back on them. Uh, I I used to before I ever took the first pain pill. I used to love the show Intervention. Yeah, and it's so sad to see. I never understood these people. You ain't got help. How are you relapsing? Right. So that tells you that there's something deeper that people relapse. It's almost guaranteed it's going to happen. It seriously. Yeah, is. I think the numbers probably showed. <clears throat> I'm sure the the. The answer for this is not a let's go get clean or let's go get put on Suboxone or Subutex and then go on with your life. This is you need to follow up with people and counseling. There's a lot of mental health issues that go hand in hand with this. Right. I've talked to you guys and talked to you, Chris, about I had a pretty rough upbringing. And, and it took this for me to ever go, oh, you do have baggage that came from that. Right. You know, because I wonder sometimes, Pete, you, you, you do this, this tests your fortitude, you know? And I'm like, why are you weak? I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of people struggle with this, but I know me. And I'm usually tougher when it comes to, I'm okay suffering. I came up suffering, right. came up being hungry. I came up being disappointed, you know, not getting anything for Christmas or my birthday and being okay with that. Like still putting my shitty clothes on and going to school the next day and just being excited. Cause my friends were telling me about the toys they got. Like I, I'm a guy. I didn't have air condition. You know what I mean? I, sometimes yeah. I didn't even have fucking power and, we had him. We had him kangaroo shoes, though. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why this one got me so bad. I, I, I'm not a weak person, but there's something about this. Well, I keep it, wanting to say disease. I know that that's a hot yeah, issue, so yeah. that's why what I always you, correct you, myself. You call it a disease, or a, yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. There is something in there with <sighs> the chemicals in my brain that. It's just it's not wired right, or this drug is causing it to screw up, and letting that that voice that used to be so small and quiet, mm -hmm. it's bringing it to the forefront. And I don't know, Chris. I don't know what it is. I don't 
feel like I'm weak. Yeah, um, well, I think that, I think you just you just said it though. I mean, it's because it's it's a different beast than your typical problems in life and dealing with everyday life bullshit because it's a literal physical thing in your in your system, you know. Um so so that's obviously very powerful. And I um, hate disappointing people. Yeah. Hate it. Yeah. And this this disease, this thing causes you to disappoint almost everybody around you. And that breaks your heart. And imagine, just imagine to yourself when you really had your heart broken from say a romantic relationship or you know, you lost a pet or a loved one or something and your heart was genuinely broken. Your spirit felt bruised or broken. This this disease causes you to feel that a lot. Like, and right when you round a corner because you just got over this one, oh, I ran into my uncle and aunt and I, I could, you know, I left there feeling really disappointed in myself because of the way they looked at me or right. something they said. And then, okay, I'm carrying on with life. And then, oh, boom, a friend, you know, and, and I'm, and, and you, you don't like hiding things. You really want to talk to them. There was, there was a groundhogs. I mentioned groundhogs earlier. <clears throat> we were on the way home from there and, uh, Trav was riding with me. I, I was going to drop him off at his house. Now, he had just got a new house. I had not seen it yet. But I'm withdrawing. I have to get home and because my medicine was right. there. Right. And he's he's in the passenger seat. I'm driving, and, and it's starting. It, it's starting to really grind on me like – I'm starting to get the jump. Yeah. And because that's something with me personally that I, my limbs, my extremities flail whenever I start really withdrawing. And so I'm driving and I'm doing like this shit, yeah. like, <laughs> right. you know, and, and I'm sweating, just pouring sweat, blowing my nose like crazy. And then the, I'm sure the anxiety of that makes it Thank even you. 10 times worse. It does. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you yeah. so much. I can identify with that. The anxiety <laughs> is overwhelming. Yeah. So here's one of my very best friends sitting there and I look over at him and I say, man, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually withdrawing. <laughs> and the, everybody knew I'd have my surgery and everything, yeah. but you know, he and I, we've been through some shit together from teenagers. And now here we are both grown family men. He's dying for me to come drop him off and go take a tour of his house. Right. And I had to tell him, brother, <clears throat> I love you, but I can't. I can't even make a quick dash in. Yeah. This is so overwhelming. I've got to drop you off and get my ass to China Grove and get my medicine. Because you know, because again, at the time I was only taking medicine orally. Right. And and so I knew I had another probably 45 minutes to an hour after I got there, got my medicine in me to for this withdrawal yeah. effects to go away. Right. But they do go away really quick. That's why... <clears throat> When somebody is withdrawing, it's not as easy of, as, okay, you've um, you've already started the process, just tough it out. Right, like your doctor said, just don't take. Me. Yes, <laughs> just, <okay>. because <laughs> those are just the introductory. This is your body uh, nudging you. Right, right. The sweat, the runny nose, and all that. That's just it. Going, hey, don't forget, <laughs> don't forget, because it only gets worse. Master, master. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I was playing again last night. I thought about the podcast, dude. I keep getting ads for that. Do you really? Yes, and I want to. I'm, I'm wanting to get it, and because uh, you know, Landon's guitar is just sitting there. He's not interested yeah. in it right now. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Well, I'm hey, gonna look. get it, and I'm gonna. Start playing this. Get one and bring. Let's let's jam, man. I I'm so far from jamming, dude. Uh, I am too. <laughs> I am too. That's the point. But I've heard you play now, well, and I, I I'm, uh, I'm so far from. No, that. I don't know, and I just um, know a few songs. That's all. But 
But yeah, so I, I know I've kind of drugged this out, this intro, but I, <clears throat> I've watched these other two podcasts a lot, and I it makes me want to say things too, you know. I should probably just go on there and start commenting and stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Join That's really and... what I should do. Yeah. So anyway, I just <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to say we ended last time where I said I had everything going on, everything was groovy. I was getting subutex from my buddy's wife. And then her prescription stopped. Stopped because she failed a drug test with her right. counsel, her, you know, pain clinic or wherever she was going. So I'm panicking and uh, trying my best to stretch everything out because, again, like I said, I have a very important job within my company you know so this was just a just kind of a timeline wise a couple of years ago we we're up to maybe one year one ago. year okay all right i thought we were getting pretty damn recent we we're really recent <clears throat> and <clears throat> i worked for a uh a small company and i am I mean, for lack of a better term, I am the CFO, right? Right. <laughs> I I handle all of the finances so much more. You know, my fingerprints are on almost everything there. Now I'm working, and I'm going. I'm going to run out. I, I, what is going to happen here? And the. Th the thing about Subutex that I have not covered yet is I said they're the same as Suboxone. Suboxone, um, the, there is a difference, though. They're both buprenorphine, but Suboxone has, I think it's called naloxone in it, and that is an opioid blocker. So, Subutex does not have that. The Nalox, I think it's Nalox. Oh, forgive me if it's not. I should have looked that up before I came, uh, started this crap. But <clears throat> I don't like that. I, th that has been linked to tooth decay. And I... I know I have some jacked up teeth, but I care about them, <laughs> damn it. You know? Yeah, right. And there's there I think there's a class action lawsuit brewing <coughs> over that that drug affecting people. I mean, causing people who are trying to get clean who have made it through drug addiction and not had the, you know, dope mouth or whatever sunken in face because they've lost their teeth and crap. Right. And then this drug does it to them, right? So that's pitiful. And anyway, also, if I'm if I am being honest and transparent, I don't like that blocker being there. Yeah. You know why? Because I don't have a prescription. R right. So what if I don't have any more I, or I need to bounce around and take something else to keep me from being sick? I don't need that thing blocking me. Right. And that's that's as honest as I can be. It sounds terrible, but I did not have a prescription. So anyway, <clears throat> I know I say things like <clears throat> my buddy, and y'all are going, "You're bu right. Yeah. He's really not your friend." <laughs> but <clears throat> as I said, <laughs> standard deviations. Don't forget, you yeah. know, <laughs> he is my friend, but he's kind of right. over here. My buddy comes through. He's like, look, man, boom, I got you. I got you something. And it was a whole lot. When I say a whole lot, maybe a hundred, I don't know, 30 milligram oxy oxycodone, Roxy's is what we call them. Blue 
Roxy's. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, you are the man. Thank you. And then I tried to break one. And it was so hard. And honestly, you should be able to take a Roxy. It's scored in the middle. Yeah. And just click and it breaks. This was so damn hard. And I, I thought the blue was different. I was like, uh -oh. mm, this blue don't look like the blue I'm used to seeing. I said, dude, do you think these were pressed? Now, how ungrateful does that sound? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't charge me for these damn things. Right. He felt bad because his wife lost that prescription. So he was coming through for me. And here I go questioning. But dude, again, I'm not an idiot. I don't I don't want to accidentally overdose. Did somebody make this in a basement? I don't know. I always go to the basement. Everybody goes to the basement, don't they? <laughs> it could be a garage. Yeah, it could be right in her freaking kitchen. Uh, exactly. But uh who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um and it could be their attic. That's right. <laughs> but it wasn't from a pharmacy. I know that. And he said, I think they're real. I don't know. Bullshit. <laughs> Your buddy. So what I did was I um, I would break them in half, and I would put it under my tongue. So let's say there were 100 there. There's 200. Right. Right? Doses. And I would let it dissolve <coughs> under my tongue, and they were hard as hell, so it would take uh, take a long time. But again, when I started feeling like I needed something, I would just put it under my tongue, and like I can still taste that taste. There's a, 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 a that's another thing about addiction. It's really weird. The, uh, the, there's a taste to these pills. Yeah. You you most people who just take medicine. Swallow normally it. swallow it and don't think about the peel actually having a taste. But yes, you can tell peels apart by the taste of them. And um, so again, I was past snorting. And can I say that's such a horrible word? <laughs> when I watched that back, <laughs> I noticed I was saying it a lot. What, and snorting? Yes, yeah, snorting. Like snorting? Like when you say <laughs> snorting, no, just the sound of it sounds dirty. Yeah. You know? No, I, Instead I of sniffing, I don't know. That kind of sounds wimpy to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sniffy does sound wimpy you know, as you say I that. I was sniffing pills. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, snorting is the right term. It is the right term, but I it mean, sounds I so I guess you terrible. could say. Uh, inhaling huffing <laughs> yeah. no huffing is the thing they do with the <laughs> yeah with like model car glue oh and shit oh my god um huffing glue <laughs> now that is supposed to be terribly addictive i'm glad i've oh never my even god. got into any of that um but real quick uh-huh the okay so you got these uh -huh. you, like you said that makes 200 doses Correct. what what would you at, at this time period what would you need in a day um a with those i would say now again this is kind of the thing that i have shared with you that i've tried to share to my doctor yeah but i don't know why it doesn't land on a doctor like it does on my friends but the truth of the matter is when my addiction personally, I feel like the answer to everything is in the bottle. So anxiety, oh you yeah, know, yeah, shit yeah, gets yeah. tough at work, yeah, or whatever. I just I reach, put one under my tongue, and just knowing it's there, feeling it there under my tongue, tasting that taste. For some reason, call it placebo. A lot of this probably deals with placebo. Yeah, when you get to the core of it, but. The anxiety drops down, you know, energy level increases. And um, and that's what I was saying, too, about relating to some small degree mm -hmm. with my, you know, I hate, I hate taking pills. I know anything. you do. That's, that's, that's like if something you, if you know, Chris, you yeah. know that, that that's the truth. That's right. You know, if I'm taking an Advil, it's pretty it's fucking bad. bad. Um, but, you know, I take the anxiety medic medicine I've had for, for years, and this is a very small dosage, but there's 
when you start seeing a couple left in the bottle and you got to call the pharmacy, I always get anxiety because something can happen. There's been a time where, well, we're out. Yes. Uh, and then luckily can you can find another store most of the time for yep. the temporary, whatever, or, or, or when it's time, you know, so you, you want to call them the, the phone thing and you used to use, I just use like the phone thing now to call my prescriptions. Right. But that damn thing don't work half the time. It, you're not saying anything. You're using the buttons, touch tone. Yes. But it's still like, I'm sorry, we didn't catch that. And you're like, and did they get the that, motherfucker? I'm so glad you're, that is so real. I, I, I understand that piece of it. Absolutely. Um, because, and you know, we go on our yearly mountain trip. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I have, okay, I got one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? And now you know That's, that when we go on our yearly mountain thing, I'm doing the same damn uh, right. thing and just haven't told y'all that. Right, right. So, and, I mean, that part of it I get. Um, yes. Because this is something that you just don't stop taking, you know. That's um, right. And you feel it, so. Anyway, sorry. And no, I'm glad note. you said that because everything you were saying was so spot on with the way I've been. Mm -hmm. You're, you always are worried something can happen, yep. even though it's a legit prescription. Like, I remember. You have refills left. Yes. I, something can happen yeah. with the computer or a person or exactly. something. Um, and. One thing I used to think about back in the day, you know, when I started kind of not, uh, you know, we call them bug out bags or, yeah, pat, you know, you know, hoarding stuff for some kind of event. You worry, but I was like, I wonder if I should just like squirrel some of these away every once in a while in case some shit hits the fan and we, uh, or, or even if it's just like a natural disaster for, That's a, right. for a month or so, you know what I mean? And I never did, but I, I've always thought about that. That would be so smart. Yeah. Because you're right. I actually think about things like that when I do watch something like a documentary on Katrina yeah. or something. Yeah. And these pharmacies are just wiped out for miles. And oh my God. Yeah. What if you were right there at the end, needed, you had two or three in your bottle. And then here that comes and wipes everything out. Exactly. You, your phone's not working. You that, can't even call right. friends or anything. Oh, my God. It's a nightmare scenario, it, it guys. Is. It is. And um, anyway, to answer your question, I was probably taking one and a half, maybe two, depending on yeah. anxiety levels or whatever. <clears throat> um, and I was functioning. It was taking the place of the subutex and just letting it dissolve under my tongue. Again, the bioavailability, I think sublingually has a, it's, per, it's on percentage. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a good one. Actually, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but here's Oops. where my life goes off the fucking rails. <laughs> I told you when I brought up Butterbean and we went to the Tough Man contest, I said, you know, Landon and I have gotten into watching this stuff together. He has become a big UFC fan, yep. Ultimate Fighting Championship. Watched a lot over here. Yes. And I have been a fan from its inception. I actually was at UFC number five, believe it or not. It was here in Charlotte. And Dan the Beast Severn won that one. That was yep. uh, wild. But I used to dream back then that if I ever had a son, I would love for he and I to be into boxing and stuff together and be able to right. talk. And it's happened, and it's such a, a amazing thing. Well, Brooklyn, to a degree has gotten into it because Landon it's like he is just like I was about boxing when I was his age. Yeah. It's like he can wear somebody's ear out yeah. and has to go <laughs> to somebody else because he's just got it in him. He wants to talk like about he, it. Like we did game of Thrones. Yes, That's what, that's the way it feels. And, um, so Brooklyn has gotten into it. So, all right, your daughter was there. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. I remember this. So the UFC, is coming to Charlotte again, and I went and bought tickets. I bought me and Landon tickets. I could not get um, all these t tickets together 
but I got Brooklyn and Camden, Chris's daughter, tickets as well. So the four of us go in my truck. But here's the thing. It just so happens that my old connection on the Subutex found me some Subutex. He, so I had like maybe the equivalent of a prescription. I probably had about 40 or 45 of them. He, he had found me and, but I still had all these blue things and I was just continuing to take them. And it just, it literally, I, because I believe it was meant to be, I really believe this was meant to happen. Our UFC happened to be at 11 a.m. It started. Yeah, that was that was weird. So weird. So we were up at like 7 a.m. getting ready, and that morning I took my last half of a blue Roxy. Now, we're all feeling great. We're riding down. We park. I find a great parking spot right on the side of the road so I know that when it's over, That's we can right. just jump right mm -hmm. over the the um, sidewalk and we're on the road gone. And we go in. <clears throat> and... We grabbed some food. They have they had these boxes you could grab that had like chicken tenders and fries in them. Excuse me. And and you could pick up a honey mustard and a ranch. Well, because I hold on, let me let me make this make sense. <laughs> Since I told you at seven AM I took my last half of a blue, well, I got the Subutex. Now, the ones I was used to taking were white and round peels. The Subutex that he got me were orange and football shaped oval. Well, that don't sound nor that's normal for the different different brands? manufacturers. Okay. Yep, and um, <clears throat> so I took a few of those with me. And we left, and I told you the Subutex does not have the naloxone in it, the the yeah. opiate blocker. Right. <clears throat> so we each get chicken tender baskets, and we sit down and start eating them. And I told him, I said, man, I think my chicken is bad. And Landon, I mean, you're talking at the Coliseum. So dude. you're sitting in the col at this point in the seats in the, seats, in the Coliseum, literally yeah. our seats. Yeah. And uh, he's so excited. I'm excited that he's excited. The octagon is right there. We're on the lower level. Pay good money for these seats, just to be straight up to so, so you guys will know how bad this stung for me. I paid twelve hundred dollars for all our tickets. Damn. And then we go there and. The chicken tender baskets was like 60 bucks for that and a drink. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting there telling Landon, dude, these suck. Yeah. He's like, mine's good. Dude. Yeah. Mine's excellent. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, I th really think mine's spoiled. They had a bunch of boxes there that under a heat lamp that you could just grab one. Right. And I was telling him, I said, they had an event here last night. I wonder if these, if they had some left over that happened to still be in the warmer and I happened to grab one and you got a new one from today. Right. Whatever. I mean, I was like, this just, this tastes bad. I said, son, look at, I mean, you, how many times in, in your life have you seen me not eat something? Right. He said, did you try his? Never. No, okay. I did not. I wasn't, I just wasn't feeling good anyway. Yeah. So I sat mine down and dude, the fights come on. And, you know, Bruce Buffer's out there. And I mean, it's it's so exciting to watch your son do this. And I wish I could have seen our kids. Yeah. Uh, and now 
our daughters, I mean. <laughs> And, um, so they were, yeah. If I remember right, y'all were like they were kind of behind you or something. They were kind of up into the. They were in the upper section, one section up above us. Oh, okay. And um, so they were kind of looking down on the octagon, and we were looking kind of almost through the cage. Right, right. Um, we had really good seats. I hate it, but we <laughs> did. And uh, so we had a guy from Charlotte named Brian Battle who came out there and he was like the second or third fight of the day. And usually if you're watching the UFC on the prelims and you got second or third fight of the card, you can see the seats are so sparse. Yeah. People are doing other things. Hadn't even got their seat yet. And this guy, he knocked out his opponent in like 13 seconds. I think it was. And I'm telling you the roof blew off the place. And the guy was out there doing the Ric Flair strut. <laughs> and it was just so cool because he was home in Charlotte and everybody was watching him do this. And Daniel Cormier, when he was interviewing him after the fight, said that was a main event, you know, reception. Right. And and that guy was just so pumped. It was one of the greatest moments. We were jumping up and down and landing. My son <laughs> put his arm around me as we're jumping. You know him yes that was a moment for him to do that yes it was he is not like that and i'm thinking this is the greatest thing but i was also nervous because i knew i was pouring sweat Uh, yeah i could feel the sweat running down my back i was sweating so bad and i told him i said i said man i'm sick what happened was I took that half at 7 a.m. of the Blue Roxy. We get to the Coliseum. We're sitting down. And I probably 30 minutes prior to that fight happening dissolved a little piece of the Subutex under my tongue. And now, in my mind... I'm thinking, why are you getting sick? Is it something to do with switching this medicine? Right. I said, that peel didn't look like the other ones. Did he give me Suboxone? And there's and it's, that blocker is fucking doing something, and I'm starting to withdraw. Like, what's going on here? Right. I told him, I said, man, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I went to the bathroom in the Coliseum which nobody likes shitting in public. No, especially not those kind of events. Thank oh you. Oh, my God. So I go, I wait for a stall to open up, and I go in there, and there's no hook on the back of the door or anything. I, I took my damn my uh, hoodie off because I was pouring sweat, right. took my fanny pack, clicked it, and hung it around my neck like a necklace, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, I'm done. Yeah. Couldn't stop shitting. <laughs> There's a line out the damn. I could see through the crack of the door. Yes. People out there getting so mad because I just keep reaching back and flushing. Right. And it and uh, trying to courtesy flush, blowing my nose. Right. right. Like it's it's coming over me, man. I am starting to feel so sick. <clears throat> I texted the kids. I said I'm going to the truck. Brooklyn, we had a group text. Brooklyn said, she said, go on home. We'll get an Uber. And I'm like, that's not a bad idea. But I don't have my keys. On the way into the Coliseum, Camden's purse was too big. They have rules on how big the damn, your bags can be. And her, she had like a designer handbag. It was just too big. So I gave them my keys and they went back and put the in the truck. So they still had my keys. So now this place is jam packed. I am shitting my guts out. I thought, and I tell her, I'm like, please bring them to me. She's like, where are you? And I'm trying to describe what I'm seeing, but I'm getting sicker by the second. I'm standing out on the concourse. 
people just milling around. I mean, it's elbow to elbow, dude. And I'm and I'm just standing there, sweat, <clears throat> tears. When she saw me, when she came up, finally found me. I could tell by the look on her face that I was in bad shape. Right. She looked like the color drained out of her. And she said, please go home, Daddy. We're okay. We'll get an Uber. And I said, I think I am. So I, I got the keys, and I start going. My stomach is just rumbling, and I had to walk all the way back. <clears throat> this was May the 13th of last year. I'll never forget this day. I get to my truck. I drive a black Toyota Tundra, <clears throat> tinted windows. I get in the seat of this thing. And that, by this time, I'm crying. Like, I know I'm in bad shape. And what? Um, and I'm, all I'm saying is, what did I do? What did I do? How I, I saw three fights in there. Right. Spent all this money. Had one of the best moments that I've ever had with my son. And... Now here I am in my truck, sweating. Like you know how your clothes stick to you when you're sweating. It was I was pouring sweat, and all of a sudden it hits me. I'm like, oh god, I can't, I can't do anything until I shit again. <laughs> right. But I'm in my truck, so I start looking for a bag to shit in. Or something. <laughs> like I'm in bad shape, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. I, it is funny I, as I, hell. Don't get no, me wrong. I mean, because I remember. When this happened, Camden mentioned you getting sick. We didn't know all that, right? No, at the time, but you've you've since told yes. me all this. But yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I'm In the beginning, it was bitch. just I got food poisoning from that chicken tenders. Mm. Um, but so I start looking, and there's Camden's big designer bag. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I know this because I know the story already. But damn sure. Like, <laughs> but <laughs> but honestly, I uh. <laughs> <laughs> Landon, when I left, he asked me if I would take out. He bought some gloves, UFC gloves for yeah. 30th uh, anniversary. And um, I had bought everybody T-shirts, too. So I took all that outside with me. So I did have those UFC bags. Right. But then I look, and I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot. I just bought this bucket to detail your car. <laughs> and it had all the you know, cleaning products down inside and it was sealed. Right. I ripped that plastic off of that thing, dumped everything out, jumped in the back. You know, I went out the driver's door, jumped in the back seat door. <laughs> the, and I can hardly peel my pants down because they're so sweaty. And I sit on this bucket in my truck, screaming, like yelling, because it was what <laughs> I'm telling you. It had to be Shaq's fetus size. <laughs> I am not lying I'm when sorry. I tell you <laughs> what came out of me. I, I had been constipated for five years. <coughs> yes. I shit in that Coliseum <laughs> four times before I came out of that stall. Whatever that was, was just the plug or whatever. <laughs> but what came out of me in that bucket, I gave birth in that <laughs> truck that day. I was screaming. Oh, and I'm telling you. Let me, when wait I, a minute. Why? <laughs> I promise you it was the size of a fucking two liter with a you, tail. <laughs> you said <Shaq> <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I'm not well, over that yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's embarrassing to talk about, but I'm not lying. This is the things oh, that shit. happen when you take these type drugs. Now, oh. wow! I am sitting on this bucket. I'm on the phone. I'm like, dude, what in the hell did you give me? Right. Did you fuck up and give me su Suboxone instead of Subutex? No. And uh, I said, he said, 
how long has it been since you've took a sub? That's what we call them subs. Yeah. And I said, I well, I just finished those blue things this morning at seven o'clock. He said, but before that, when was the last time you had a sub? I said, hell, I don't know, a couple weeks. He said, he said, you're in precipitated withdrawals. I said, what? He said, you're only the second person I know who's experienced this. The other person is me. (laughs) He said, (laughs) unfortunately, I was on a job site when it happened to me. Yeah. And he said, where are you at? And I said, I am downtown Charlotte at the Coliseum. He said, but where? What road? I said, I don't know. He said, drop me a pen. I couldn't. I could not function. I had my phone. I'm crying, dude. My body, I'm sitting on a bucket in the back of my truck. The windows are tinted. Thank the Lord. People are walking on that sidewalk that I parked beside. Right. Up and down. (laughs) Probably heard me yelling in there. Like, you want to talk about a low point in my life. That was it. He said, he said, if you can drop me a pen, I will be there. Now, he is in faith. I am in Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, that's a he, little drive. He said, because, and, and I'm glad he'd experienced it, Yeah, because he came to help me. But he said, he was wrong on a couple things, but this is hindsight, right? Yeah. But at the time, he said, look, man, you got to get what happened is, he said, because it's been so long since you took a Subutex, when you took that Subutex, it it knocked all the opiates out of your receptors. You It puts you in full-blown withdrawal. Now, I had told you before that I had been in withdrawal Mm -hmm. and, and it was horrible that down in Charleston, I always referred to it as Charleston, right? And that was nothing because here's the thing. Although I reached full blown withdrawal in Charleston, it was a gradual. Yeah. This all happened in about 20 minutes. Like I went from feeling great, to full-blown withdrawal that fast, and it was the most horrible thing I have ever, ever, ever felt physically in my life. I would go back to that stainless steel table and let them hold me down and jam that damn (laughs) syringe in my penis a hundred times in a row before I would do this again. Yeah. He... I'm sitting there. I can't even hardly hold my phone. I'm trying so hard to find to drop him a pen because he needs to know exactly where I'm at. Yeah. And I I can't get out and look at the damn street signs. I'm just, I can't walk. I'm, I'm went back. I pulled my pants back up. I put that fucking lid on that thing. And (laughs) and it wasn't until later that I looked in there and realized that it was the biggest thing that I've ever seen. (laughs) Right. It was a six pound, eight ounce. (laughs) God. I know when you say <laughs> it was the biggest. I would like to enter you know, in Guinness on. record. I'm sorry if just they real, had a record for that. Yeah, I, you know I was born six pounds eight inch eight, eight six pounds eight. That was ounces. me too. That's why I said oh, it. Really? Seriously? Were you seriously were born the same? Six okay. eight. I was I'm my mom's biggest you, kid. I wonder why you picked that number. No, okay. That was me. I just thought, did, did I stay that damn one time or something? That's funny, dude. That's, That's awesome. crazy. Six pounds, eight ounces. Exactly. And um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, I had a baby boy, and uh, <laughs> um, oh, so Jesus. I get in the front seat, and I've got the AC maxed right because I am pouring sweat. And and he said to me, this is what he said that was wrong, because I've talked to my doctor <coughs> since. And um, 
not the doctor I hate, but yeah. the real doctor. And I, what he told me on the phone before he came to help me was, you can take as many of those subs as you want. You're done. It won't help you right now. You've got to get opiates back in your system. So I'm on my way to help you. And I'm like, please hurry. Please hurry. And um, <clears throat> I'm not kidding you when I tell you that I think it took him an hour to get there. Yeah, I'm sure. In the course of that hour, I laid in the front of – I had the seat laid back. And I flopped around. My arms were like this, like they just jumped that high, that high. And my knees and my legs and my everything just spasms like that. And it's uncontrollable. And it's so embarrassing to talk about this. And I, all I'm thinking is, what have you done? What have you done, James, in – you know, I, I want to know what I've done in that moment, right? Yeah. But I'm really wanting to know what I've done with my life. Right. How do you wind up here in what was going to be a memory, a bookmark in time for me, my son, my daughter, your daughter? It ended up being one, but yeah. for totally different reasons. Right. You know, and right. I, because. Again, as you alluded to earlier, we this was passed off as I got food poison or instant. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right. I don't think anybody bought it, but I, that's all I could say is I don't know what happened. The chicken tenders tasted terrible, and the next thing you know, I'm shitting and everything. And um, have you seen the movie Flight with Denzel Washington? Yes, yes. He's the airline pilot. He was drunk. Yep. Yep. I have not missed a Denzel movie ever. I didn't think so. So this is going to, you will understand what I'm saying then. Do you remember the scene? Because Don Cheadle's in it, mm -hmm. and he he and that other guy, I know him too, they have Denzel in a hotel room, and they come to get him to take him to court, and he is passed out on the floor in the bathroom, yes. and there's liquor bottles everywhere. He says, call so-and-so, and John Goodman shows up right. with a ponytail. I know what scene you're talking about. And he comes in, he's like, put that table right here. And yeah. <laughs> he cuts out some lines of cocaine and he he gets that cigarette and drops some tobacco out and puts cocaine. It's like a cocoa puff or something like that. Right. And he's like, here, hit that. And Denzel hits it and he snorts those lines. And gets he's him, like, all right. Gets him right for court. Let's go. And they went to court. This dude shows up. Opens my now I've been flopping around, just crying and yelling like whoa whoa, <laughs> and, and it's uncontrollable spasms. I know, I'm right? Sorry, the way you no, said that. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> fine, and um, he opens my passenger door because he knew. I told him I was shitting in a bucket in the middle of the damn mm -hmm. Charlotte. He opens my passenger door and he's opening up a black ice tree and hangs it around my mirror <laughs> he's, he, he jumps in he's like drink this this is my special concoction um and it was like just um a bottle of water that he had poured some of the electrolyte powder or whatever in yeah. he's like this is my thing for hangovers yeah and um so i'm trying to chug that while he is taking one of those blue pills, crushing it up on my console, and says, snort this. I didn't, I wouldn't care if he said, you know, shove this up your ass. Right. Whatever. I was going to do it and try it right then. I leaned down. I snorted that. He's like, um, he crushed it up and done. said, do this. Boom, I did it. He said, lay back, and uh, I'm going to sit in my truck. He had his truck parked right in front of me. I'm going to sit in my truck and make sure you're going to be okay. You just lay here and relax. That'll hit you in just a second. And he's right. Like, I laid there, and it, and it just 
the wave ran over my body. I felt normal again, but I felt exhausted because my body had been spasming full bore for right. about an hour. And I lay there with my truck running AC on, and I just fell asleep. Now, that... That sounded like me after the kidney stone. <laughs> yeah. After, after all you that know, pain for hours. You know how many times I've thought about you and that damn kidney stone? <laughs> Seriously, I, I've thought about that. Like Two of them, by like the way. How lucky, like, that... There's people who I know personally, that's how they got addicted to opiates. Was kidney stones because it's supposed to be like the worst pain, like oh my giving god. birth and all this stuff. Oh my god! And uh, this guy had chronic ones though, and uh, that 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 got him on pills. Yeah. But I felt I have felt sorry for you for that because I know if it was enough to drive somebody to pain pills, it had to be terrible. But it's scary to think about that. I just I snorted those lines, laid back, and went to sleep like. Dude, some people don't wake up from that. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like yeah. that I I don't know. Like I know him, so I do know that that what he had me snort was the same thing I had been putting under my tongue. Right. Cuz he said that was his last two of those. He had given me a bunch of them, they ran out, but he had a couple in the bottom of a bottle mixed with a bunch of stuff and he found them and that's he gave those to me. He didn't have any more to give. But what if? You know what I mean? What yeah. if that since we know those were not real Roxies? And let's imagine this, if you would, because I think about this stuff and I think it's important to think about. Let's say you and I are making a batch of these pills. And we do put fentanyl in it, right? A yeah. little bit goes a long way, right? And you mix all this up, and you're putting it in a pill press. We know that there could be more fentanyl in one of those That's pills right. than, than, than the, the rest of them. And what if that one was the one? Like they, I hate thinking that way, but that's what happens. And so, but at that moment, I'm telling you, he he could have done anything. He brought, he came in, he said, this, do this. And it worked. And I got some rest and I woke up and I thanked him. But now here I am. Where do I go from here? Yeah. I'm terrified, terrified to take another subutex. Yeah. Cause it, it, at that moment, I would imagine we've done the same thing. I would think so. So he said he would try to find some more. This is the this is the horse shit. This is why I have really had it out with my doctor. So yeah, now he's got to find the Roxies. Yeah, because you you can't just immediately go to that now. Right. Apparently, in in my mind, and and again, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know if like right then I could have said, okay, well I just went full blown withdrawal, and now I'm okay for however long this is gonna last. Right probably let's just be honest here let's think about this logically if if i just knocked myself full blown withdrawal cleared my all my receptors and then put put those two blues in there and by the way i have found out that's what they're called on the street blues blues they're running rampant. Those fake 30 milligram Roxies are basically all that's on the street now. Yeah. You 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 might you, like Google that, guys. There's articles about it. There these things are everywhere. They're they're coming into this country. They're not being made in people's basements. They're pre-made. They're coming. They're flood this country is flooded with blues right now. Mm. Or I say right now in the recent now and in the recent past, at least. So here's what happens. He, he says, all I can get my hands on is this heroin, the white China, China, same, white, same stuff, from same stuff from before her house. Yeah. Yep. Years before I need to make a correction. Oh, I was just thinking about it during the break. <clears throat> He didn't have two blues. He had one blue. 
left. The second line was China White. Oh, okay. In my car, in my in my truck. I, I just remembered that. That is the way it was. Because, okay, so the first line was the last blue he had. And then he said, that's probably not going to be enough. Here's a little line of this. And again, I would have done anything at that time. So I did snort that, and I laid back, and I went to sleep. And I don't know how long I was out, not not too long. Um, <clears throat> but I woke up, and I mean, I felt, I felt exhausted, but I felt, you know, great. I felt normal again. Right. And uh, I walked up to his truck window, and I said, he said, he's in there. He's like, how you feel, man? I said, a lot better. You know, can't thank you enough. It, it really, I mean, the, the dude was right there with his wife and his kid, and I know, I can imagine if I'm hearing this from somebody, I'm like, wow, you know, James hangs with some shady ass people. To, <laughs> I mean, for the dude to whip out a blue and then some heroin and bust in with the Christmas tree and the damn <laughs> yeah. hangover drink. And like, he was prepared, but he had said on the phone, he went through this before too. And so when I'm standing out his window, he said, Imagine going through it like I did. He said, I was on a job site, and I had nobody to help me. He had to drive, leave there and drive himself withdrawing like that. So since then, I so after he told me that, I went, and when I got home, I read, because I waited there in the parking lot, like it took so long for me to go go there and withdraw like I was, wait on him, fall asleep, wake up, send him on his way and thank him, but not before I said, "What am I gonna do?" Right, I have nothing. He gave me a little baggie of that, and um. <laughs> He left, like, he literally pulled out as people were coming out of the show. It was ending. And the kids came. I had already had the bucket in the bed of the truck now. Right. So you had, like, texted in and said, I'm still here or something. Yes, I did. I sure did. I said, don't get an Uber. I am still here. Same spot. So they came out, and I uh, I told him I was like, wow, I don't know what happened to me, man. That just something crawled all over me all of a sudden, but I feel a lot better now. Again, every muscle in my body felt exhausted. Right. Like I've been working out. And um, <clears throat> we left and, and went home. And when I got home, I started reading up on this precipitated withdrawal. I was confused all this time. So from 2016, when I remember when I described being in that detox facility and I said, they will let you withdraw, but then you have to come up to them and they start scoring you. Yeah, on that scale. Yeah, that was to keep me from going into, anybody from going into precipitated withdrawal. So if if, if you give somebody Subutex, it's the first time you introduce that drug and they have enough opiates in their system, right? It's like there's a battle over these receptors and it it will send you into full-blown withdrawal instantly. And they're trying to keep you from that. So they have to let you withdraw to a certain degree before they introduce the, the sub, suboxone. Right. Well, I I did not realize that was... What was happening the whole time, I thought it was that opiate blocker that's in Suboxone right. that was the culprit. It's not. It's it's the uh, buprenorphine itself 
that will battle for the receptors and do that. Now they will get, you can you can go back and forth like I could go right now and I could take a Roxy one day, Subutex the next. Roxy one as long as you keep it in your system. But because I went so long without right. the Subutex and only had these blues in my system, that's what caused that. And so now, now not only, now I am, think about this. Well, it was like 2009 this all started. Here I am in 2023. <clears throat> and just learning this, that's, again, I'm, it's not like I jumped with both feet into this lifestyle. Oh, right, right. It was like real slow for me. And methodical because all I wanted to do was be normal. So I wasn't, I wasn't this fiend or anything. I just, oh, this works. Well, I'm gonna ride this. All I need is this until that runs out, and then oh, oh, I'm on this now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever I can get, and that works and helps me get through my days and everything like normal again. All to keep from getting sick, keep from withdrawing. And so now I have this big story of what happened to me at the Coliseum. I'm at work. That was May 13th. I'm embarrassed, right? That's a story you don't want to tell. Right. But I knew. I'm like, holy shit, here I am back again. 2016, first time I ever saw heroin in my life, and I was doing it then. Here I am, 2023. CFO of a company. And I got to put this in my body just to maintain and, and to not be sick. And I, I start again. When that little baggie ended, I I went straight back to the same guy. The same guy gave me another little baggie. But this time, and and he would occasionally find more of those blues. Yeah. And I and I was not snorting them or anything. I was letting those dissolve under my tongue like I had been. <clears throat> but I had these subutex that i was terrified of now right <laughs> so from from may june july i'm in this vicious cycle of sometimes snorting a little bit of heroin sometimes i'm dissolving blues under my tongue and it's working but something started happening to me <clears throat> i started falling asleep on the toilet I would I would be in there and I would just sit down right and, and it's quiet in the toilet you know yeah. I'm used to being at work and everything's jamming and everything and then I get home and I can relax do whatever I want to do and I, I sit down and next thing you know it's like <laughs> and it scare the hell out of you right. and you wake you, up wait, realize you just nodded on the shitter yes and i'm like wait a minute i think all the way back to when i was hanging out with my friend who passed away and i said she was falling asleep on the toilet i'd be outside the door Are you okay right right uh, and i start going oh whoa what's happening here yeah she's yeah, gone is, now this is a different level yeah, yeah. And, and and she had passed by this time. Right. And so I'm going, whoa, what is... So I'm like, is, is there fentanyl in this? I just started getting real paranoid. So I went on Amazon and I ordered fentanyl test kits. And I ordered two different brands. So here I sit in my bathroom with all these test tubes lined up on this tray, <laughs> right? Doing and, the chemistry time. Yes, and these droppers and uh, all this stuff. And 
I had seven tests. I tested seven different things that I had. Because when you got a baggie, that baggie ran out, you got another baggie, it looked different. Yeah. It tasted different. And and so I would still have a little residue here and some here and and then some of those blues I would because it tells you on there if it's a peel you got to crush it and mix it with this yeah and um all seven tested positive for fentanyl now damn it does not tell you to what degree how much fentanyl's in there was it just contaminated with fentanyl right was it partially was it all fentanyl I who knew. But I said, the test kits are broke. There's no way right. I'm taking fentanyl. And so I did a, a control test. I tested one of my blood pressure pills that I knew were legit. Right. And it was negative. So I said, holy fuck. It was such an eye-opening moment. You're I'm right. sitting there, and everything I have in front of me has fentanyl in it. Is it at least laced with it at to least. some degree. And... Listen, Damn. this is this is the the you want to talk about a low point. At this point, my daughter and my granddaughter were staying at my house. And I started thinking what would happen like if I if I've got fentanyl in here on my bathroom counter now. So what if it was contaminated and they touched? I don't, I, you know what I mean? It's got real paranoia. Yeah. I'm like, this has got to end. I can, so I cleaned my ca- counter off. And the next day, I went to my boss and I said, let me tell you something. Remember when I went to the UFC a couple months ago? This is what happened. And you heard it. I got sick. This is what happened. This is exactly what happened. I, you know, shit in a bucket and all this stuff. And it was <laughs> terrible. Worst, worst day of my life. Worst pain, worst everything. I said, I need help. I'm falling asleep on the toilet. I did these tests, all of it. Everything I was touching, taking my body had fentanyl in it. He said, <clears throat> I got your back. He he said, go away. Go get better. I will pay you. I will still pay you just like you're here. And um, I was like, man, I really appreciate that. And it was a little crazier than that. Like we held a meeting at work and some things, you know, it was kind of shared with everybody what was happening that I had to go away. And, uh, I didn't know where I was going. This is how I found out about the places in Florida. Mm -hmm. He was offering to help me. We talked to some people there. So there are conversations that I would have with them, and then he would have with them. And he's letting them know, like, look, I'm the pocketbook here. I'm his friend. I'm his boss but I'm going to pay for this. Right. And dude, they kept up in the price and, and adding money and layers to it. And he hit me up and said, look, we got to change course here. These people, they're, they're vampires. They're, they're only out for money. And, um, cause we were researching a spot. Right. And then I started researching other spots and they're all, all the same. It seemed like beautiful websites, with happy looking people and I don't know if you do, if you dig, you can find that it's not as ideal as it may sound, but it costs an arm and a leg. And thankfully I had somebody that was willing to do that, but I didn't want to take advantage of them. Well, I said, look, I'm at least going to detox. I'm going to go back to the place I went in 2016. It's the only place I know, you right. know, that, that, uh, excuse me. I still say that Noah's Ark door. So now I didn't have an in my buddy. He's moved on. He's got his own practice. Now he's not, 
involved with that place. So I had to be the one waiting outside the door. And I said, you know, fuck this. I'm going to wait in my truck. And I slept in that parking lot for three days waiting on a bed. People would come out, tap on my window. You okay? Yes, I'm fine. They teased me one day. They said they had a bed for me. And then I got excited and I went in there and then they said, oh, it was a female bed that opened up. I'm sorry. Right. And I'm like, well, can't. Maybe you could have five females and seven males this time, you know? And no, no, had to be a female bed. So there was a bed in there that was open for a whole day while I'm out in the parking lot. To me, that's a flaw. I, I, Absolutely. Again. It's a flaw. Um, so the, the next day, they came, knocked on my window, said, hey, we got you a bed. Come on. I go in there. I'm shaking my head because I, I know all this stuff here. It's just, it's just Yeah. I I had to, you know, strip down, my take my belt off, my shoestrings and everything, and all my jewelry and I went in there in the back and they take you to like this triage where they're checking your vitals and asking you what all medicines are you on Mm -hmm. because when you're in one of these facilities they they have to still give you the medicines you need like blood pressure medicine and things so they get the whole list of everything you're taking which for me is crazy it's pretty good list and um get your vitals and then ask you what you've been taking, you know, illegally. And my vitals, my sugar was too high and my blood pressure was too high. And I was like, look, my blood pressure is always high. I said, every time a doctor or somebody checks my blood pressure, they act concerned. I said, but this has been my blood pressure for years right and i take medicine for it well i also still obviously have the cpap for sleep apnea no connection this time right they say sorry no no drop cord no drop cord (laughs) they said listen i talked to the doctor because he made me go back and wait in the waiting room came out said talk to the doctor Here's your bag back with all your stuff in it. We can't treat you here. Unfortunately, you need to go to a hospital and be monitored. And uh, I was like, okay, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I understand. You're just a little detox facility. And uh, I'm a little bit outside of what you're able to do. And, but where do I go from here? Like, I've already been out of work for three days. My boss gave me a week is basically what he said. Yeah. You know? So, she said, here, here's a couple numbers, phone numbers. Call them and get a bed there and they can help you. I said, have you referred me to them? Like, right. And when I call, are they, do they know about me? All the stuff we talked about back there and that you wrote down, like, has all that been forwarded to them electronically or something? No, we don't do that. (laughs) And I said, uh, so I'm just cold calling them. Yeah. Okay. So I call, you get an answer machine, (laughs) both places, both numbers. You leave. You have to leave this message, which makes you feel this low. Yeah. You know, I'm. I'm at the time. Yeah, I had just turned fifty. A grandfather, supposedly, have this important job at work, and I'm on a answering machine going. Right. I need help. I'm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and 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 again, that's part of the process. I understand that. I'm just explaining to you that. When you're that low and you do decide to call that number because you know, like, this is it. It's over. 
What if they say, come on down now? Like it's, it's, you know what you're in for. Right. That's a scary ass thought. I'm about to go through some serious pain here. So <clears throat> then you get an answer machine. You get all this, you know, and yeah. then, and then it's the answer machine. You got to stutter through this message and hope you said your number right. And yeah. they, you know, <laughs> right. and anyway, I went home and waited and waited. Nothing. It's like two days later. Now I'm five days out of work. But I'm still getting paid. And uh, I get a call back, finally. And they said, sorry, we, uh, I think it was Labor Day. Was that September? No, August, end of August is when I, this happened. This was the end of August, so... There was some reason there was some holiday there. It might have been Labor Day. I don't know. I feel like that's September. That sounds right because I remember but, you texted me about all this. But I know it was all end of August sometime. And um, but they said, "Come on down to Charlotte." And <clears throat> I had no idea what I was in for, but I went. I knew it was going to be a hospital. And it was Atrium Mercy Hospital in Charlotte. I don't know if, you know, I don't mind plugging them because it was a pretty cool place. You go and they put you in a room, Chris. The way I described that first place I went where mm. there's a public restroom and a public area with a television now I am in a private room. I have my own bathroom. Right. I have a bed that is, you know, like a good hospital bed that you can raise up and down. And <laughs> not not a cot and a damn drip, yeah. drip on the floor. <laughs> Got my own TV. <laughs> do, 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 do. And they bring you three meals a day. They come in and check your vitals every few hours, man. These people, they were like, Oh, you're critically low on potassium and came and gave me an IV of potassium. Like I was, I was like, holy shit, I didn't know that. Evidently, if you take a lot of D3, it lowers your potassium. And I had been mm -hmm. taking a lot of vitamin D3. <clears throat> well, anyway, I'm there. The doctor makes rounds in the morning. You're on a hallway with a bunch of other people and they have these meetings across the hall that you have to go to. The second day, I remember the lady came by and said, meeting in an hour. And I said, I said, ma'am, I'm withdrawing. She said, honey, everybody on this floor is withdrawing. <laughs> Unless the doctor says you don't have to come to the meeting, you better be there. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, she's not wrong. No, she wasn't. Yeah, this sounds like that's tough love. Uh, I loved it. Ethel sounds she, like her name was. Me and that lady, this is an older black lady. She was so cool, man. She, We ended up loving each other to death. Um, <laughs> Honey, everybody yeah. on this town, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, but yeah, no, seriously, it was like the third morning I woke up there and the doctor came through and said, how are you feeling? I said, surprisingly, okay. Yeah. I said, am I like, I know those test kits said everything had fentanyl in it. Was Is something up here? Like, was I really not taking anything? And she said, oh, no. No, uh, that's this is how fentanyl withdrawal is. It takes a while. It can take up to 72 hours or something. And I was like, oh, shit. So. <clears throat> yeah, you got your hopes up where you're like you were, you were yeah. already through it. Yeah, because yeah. I just felt like crap. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And, dude, it was like clockwork. But. 
I had told her, I said, listen, my dream is to be off of all this stuff. I've been, I've been studying, I've been watching these testimonials and of people who took a thing called sublocade and they said it, it worked for them to get off of sub, suboxin and subutex. People been on there 12 years and came off of it. She said, yes. She said, now that you've mentioned it, I can talk to you about it. What that means, that's, I do not know, guys, but that's how it went down. So you had to ask mm-hmm. about it. Okay. I promise like, you like that's a secret how it went menu down. or something. Like that's the weird. plan was that I was going to go back on Suboxone or Subutex. Yeah. When I said that, now we had a plan. She said, We can give you that here. What this is, is a yeah. shot in your abdomen of buprenorphine, which is in Suboxone and Subutex, that forms a hard seed or peel a hump up bump up under your skin absorbs into your fat into your body and micro doses you for a whole month yeah one shot last 30 days and you go back and get another shot there are people who are not going back for their third shot because of this microdose, because you don't have to put anything in your mouth daily and get that addiction back going. Yeah, the habit of the, the actual, habit of yeah. doing it. It's like people are walking away with no withdrawal symptoms, and these are people like on TikTok. I would watch multiple channels of regular people. I can't imagine that Sublicate is sponsoring them to look like normal people who have normal channels and they're lying about all this you know right this these people this had touched me said similar stories so once i said it to her and she said yes now we can talk about it and we can administer it here your first one before you leave and i said great that's what i'd like to do now she also said you're going to start withdrawing and when you do I've already got orders for the medicine we're going to give you, but you have to tell us how you're feeling. And then as things progress with this withdrawal, we can start you off with this low dose. If that's not enough, let us know and we can get you more and get you comfortable. We want you to be as comfortable as possible. I was like, thank God. I, I, I feel like this place was heaven sent. Well, if anybody hears this video and are thinking about going to a treatment facility, yes, that place was awesome, but I found another problem. There is a disconnect Mm. between what you have worked out with the doctor and the notes they put on your file or in the system for you after they leave because they come through and make their rounds in the morning and not again till the next morning. You are in the care of these around the clock nurses the rest of the time and they shift change throughout the day. If, if the orders, the doctor's orders are not crystal clear, you will have serious problems. I had to go to that meeting that day. So the doctor leaves. And just like I said, like clockwork, I started withdrawing about the 70 something of the hour. And I'm in the meeting with my sheet around, around me like this. And I'm starting to fucking feel it. Right. And the most beautiful girl in the place <laughs> <laughs> puts her arm around me. And says, you know, everything's going to be okay. And she was a patient in there, too. And um, 
I said, I got to go. I got up I, and I told that lady, I said, I'm sorry, I got to go. Because they had us doing these things where you had to circle the face that most represents how you feel. And there was like probably 50 or more different little cartoon faces on this thing. <laughs> and I had circled, you know, like a failure and all, you know, all these things. And I started crying and I just, Oh my God. I, and, and, and that's one thing that I do hate about opiates and this whole freaking game is for me personally, I'm an emotional type person who used to cry a lot. And now it, it really takes a lot to get, you know, tears to come. But, as soon as the, the drugs start coming out of your system, the emotions start coming back. And it's like they were just laying dormant or something. And so I got up and I went to my room. And I'm telling you, it it turned into my truck at the UFC 2.0. Yeah. I laid there in my bed and I flopped like a fish on that bed. Every extremity just and I'm hitting the button, calling the nurse. And I, I was like, I need my medicine. Okay, we'll be in there in just a minute. <laughs> and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing, nothing, nothing. Hit it again. I really, I really need my medicine. I'm having a hard time. And they're almost there. They're making their rounds. They're just a room away or something like that. So then they come and they give me this. The remember the doctor said we're gonna start you off with a little dose, right? And they gave me medicine and I was so grateful to have it, but it did not help me. It it well, excuse me. It did help my arms. It's like my upper body got relief finally, but my legs kept like like riding a bike. I mean they were just going and going and going. And I know I talk about this a lot about my extremities flailing, but I've never seen anybody else. And all the time that I've hung out with people who who have these issues, I've never seen anything like this. I wish I had a video of it so I could see what I'm feeling myself. Because it's the most, it's the craziest thing that your body's just spasming and my legs just jump and my arms, I mean, they'll just punch out like that. Right. So weird. Right. And, um, but it, it gave me relief from like mid chest up. So I was able to get a little bit of sleep, but I'm blowing that damn nurse's button up. Right. I need my second dose. There is no second dose. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Bullshit. Like I'm talking into this freaking speaker. The yeah. doctor said, yeah. I want the doctor here right now. Yeah. <laughs> Their doctor's not going to be back till tomorrow. And I'm like, Oh my God, you see, there's things like that, that happen to people yeah. that cause them to check themselves out of these places. Right. And cause they can go right to their car and just pop a pill. Amen. And as a matter of fact, my truck was in the freaking parking deck and I had stuff in my console to think it didn't cross my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I laid there and I was like, I, I was having all these internal conversations like, James, you got to pay your dues, brother. Yeah. Suck it up. But my body is just blam, blam, blam. And finally, at like 11 o'clock that night, <clears throat> the guy came in. Oh, I totally forgot. I was the shot. They gave me the shot that morning in the stomach after I talked to the doctor about it. But oh, that before even with before any of this. But because it takes a while to go through your sit, she knew yeah. I was still going to withdraw. Yeah, yeah. So she said, as soon as the first onset of withdrawal symptoms happen, you can get the shot, and and then we're going to give you a little bit to put in your tongue to keep you comfortable until the shot starts. Right. Well. It, it works its way into your system. Well, here's the problem. I did all the things I just said. Hit the button. They gave me the first dose. It got my upper body to quit. My le my legs just kept all night. And I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. 
help, help, because they were refusing to give me freaking medicine. And I'm telling you, the words help that were coming out of my mouth, me yelling it, was not planned. It was like something (coughs) inside of me. Like, I really was genuinely, my body was yelling for help because I didn't. Like an involuntary. Involuntary, yeah, pleading. And I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm telling you, I was yelling help loud. And what I didn't know was that all the girls on the floor were outside my door begging those nurses to help me, saying he's hurting in there he's having a hard time please give him his medicine and they were yelling and arguing with the the nurse was arguing back with them saying his orders don't say that and and i'm i'm telling you man when i heard that later i was so mad and i knew it was a flaw in the system because listen listen if the plan is to let you suffer because you deserve to i'm on board with that (laughs) right but it's the lie it don't lie and give me this hope and make me feel now all of a sudden it's pitted me against these nurses right and i can't help it i can't yeah when he says just let us know we give a little more but then it's not written down or whatever it has to be i mean now i hate everybody in there because i feel like they're doing this to me on purpose and, I, and I'm like, call the doctor, get the doctor on the phone, and all this shit. And I, it was the weirdest thing, man. And I, and, I, and I, again, if if I could just make suggestions, that would be it. Like, get your shit documented. When you talk to the doctor, before they leave, say, can I get a printout of your orders yes. that we just talked about? So that you could have something to then show the nurses, because... If they've got something to help you be comfortable, why not get it? I'm telling you, the whole week that I was there cost me twenty grand. You know, give me a little something, something for this twenty grand. You know, um, <clears throat> not asking for a hand job or anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah fucking detox with a happy ending. You're right. <laughs> maybe, so, the, maybe that'll get more people in here. <laughs> Jesus. You want mint for a pillow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, shit. But no, I promise you, I am on board with with suffering. Because if you don't, yeah, you need to. Yeah, like what? What's yeah. going to stop you? Like you almost got this little ace up your sleeve. Yeah, now you're right. like, well, if I ever get out of control, I can always go back up to the hospital I'll and just go there. And... Week vacation in my hospital bed. You know, no. They let me flop like a fish for 14 hours. And when that guy came in at 11 and gave me that second dose, I was able to close my eyes and go to sleep. It was so eerily reminiscent yeah. of my truck. Yeah, It felt the same way because when he came at 11, now I'm not on my back anymore. I'm literally in the fetal position, just uncontrollable, yelling, help, help. For hours. And not not saying, I probably said help every five minutes or so. It wasn't like every 10 seconds or something, you know, five or 10 minutes. I would, one would just bust out. And <clears throat> I'm in my room alone. I hadn't eaten in like three days because the first day I was there, I was like, oh, this hospital food's great. Next thing you know, man. Yeah, you remember everything <laughs> tasted like shit. The smell of I take the lid off of it. I would almost throw the hell up, man. I remember you mentioned that in a text we were talking. Yes, it was just I don't it was almost it was so weird. Now when I woke up the next day, I was a new man. I felt reborn. The shot in my stomach had worked. It it had ran its course or got into my system. And the shot that I got in my stomach was the first shot that my doctor ever saw administered. 
of Sublocate. Right, you said that. Yeah. He had to watch. He wanted to watch it happen because he had never given one himself and had never watched one be given. And um, <clears throat> so I feel like because of that, me and my doctor, who I still see, I'm like giving him information on the process. You know what I mean? But my insurance has put a stop to my sublocate journey. It, we had plans, big plans. Of big plans. Going the next month and getting my shot and then hoping that would be the last one. But unfortunately, my insurance would not cover it. And it took, what, two months to finally get an answer once and for all? Yeah, it was. Remember that? The, the I, deal was is you got the first one right there. Right there in the hospital. But when you go get your second one, you don't go there. No, no. There's three, and there's three different places. Three different. So, yeah. like, you got the hospital. Then afterwards, your follow-up is at this other office, but you don't get your shot at that office. This is just where we talk about everything. Yeah. When it's time for your shot, you go to a third location. That And I was down with it. It just was awkward sounding, yeah, but I was just, down with it's it. It's just stupid. And then, but the problem was there, they could never get a straight answer out of my insurance company. So I felt like every time I would go back, and I'm expecting good news. It's like, we're still waiting. And they, it got to the point where I guess they thought I didn't believe them. Because I, I kind of didn't. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. And they were showing me, look, here's where I sent this on this date and this date and this date. And finally, though, I went and they said, look, we're not going to pay for it. And this is insurance that I've paid on for the last three years. Well... If I pay out of pocket, these shots are like $1,300 a piece. I was trying to buy a house. You know? Right. And I'm, I'm like, holy crap, dude. What do I do? So, <clears throat> the plan is, I'm, I'm going to save up money now and get, get these shots and, and hopefully finish this journey that's lasted since 2009. So currently I am back on Subutex. Uh, take a little bit under my tongue, you know, every day. And it's, you know, it sucks that I'm back to, I'm back, I'm back to, you know, where I was before, but now I'm legit. Now I'm, I follow up with a doctor who right. I'm perfectly open with. His sole <laughs> purpose in life is addiction. That he is an addiction specialist. Is he's he's super nice. I can tell him anything and he there's no never a look down your nose or anything. He's help going to help me hopefully with ultimately therapy. I need therapy. I do. Um, I've yet to find the right fit. I don't know if you've talked to any psychiatrist or anything, Chris, in yeah. your in your life. And yeah, I had to for for years to for that, you know, just for the panic attack stuff. And did you find that it was hard to find a good fit, like somebody you've? Well, I mean, I was so young because it started happening really early, and it, the first I've had, I had three at that place total over the years because people retired and the last time he retired because they were knocking down the building the, the <laughs> office building so he said fuck it i'm retiring <laughs> and so i got transferred just to my general uh my my oh, primary care that so works he just manages the medication so mm. i go i go once a year but call every six the other six months so you know what oh, I'm saying? i see yeah because you gotta get a prescription right refilled but i guess because you found what works for you yeah that was it i mean you, it was you're, literally just you're lined up yeah it was just it it, it was an instant fix for me um uh, for the most part anxiety mm -hmm. still there all that stuff but no full-blown panic attacks it, i mean it was horrible dude 
Um, I won't get in that. Whole no, story, I've but, heard but, from uh, you and you know Eric. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's just been the same thing for all these years now, and it's just basically management and just refills. So, <laughs> well, I just I just want to find somebody. Like I want to talk to somebody, and and maybe they can. I don't know. Uh, like I say, I, th- I feel like I'm a pretty smart guy. Um, yeah. I feel like, but I don't think it's fair for me to be trying to self-diagnose myself. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, have... whatever helps you finish this completely. Mm-hmm. Because like we talked about before, um, when you came out of that place and told me about the shots and all that stuff, I mean, that was the, that, that's the key. Because if you're back on Subutex, mm-hmm. um, even though your legitimate prescriptions, all that stuff, and it's been being cared for by a doctor that knows the situation, it's all out in the open, all that kind of yes. stuff. It's still the habit, exactly. But the shot, it like I don't know if you mentioned that. You told me at least, if I understand it correctly, you take that shot. It doesn't matter what you take. That's exactly your what receptors they said. are all yeah blocked. blocked. And and yeah. that's what she said. She actually said there. You, oh, once we give you this shot and it's it's in place, it's doing its thing. You could go out and take anything you want. You yeah. wouldn't overdose you, or anything. You, yeah, you can't. Yeah. And, and that's the key to me is not only going through, I mean, you know, just on the outsider's look here, looking in is, but it seems common sense. You go through the, like you said, the pain and all that stuff. They help you through that, all that stuff. But get you got to get break the habit of needing that, and I'm sure that was pretty tough. Even though you you had the shot, but you oh, used to yeah. you used to, you know, you got a a ritual. Yep. You know, and I know this works. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know yeah. I'm able to do. Th- I yeah. can't imagine, and and this is again, it's just me being transparent. I can't imagine being at my job, and. And this is what I've talked to this doctor yeah, about. Right. And, you know, shit get crazy like it does and not have something to reach to. Right. So um, he has put me on a low dosage, like a Vistoril. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um, and do you know? I think I've taken three. I call it my in case of emergency yeah, break glass. Right, right. But I think I've only taken three yeah. of them. Well, that's and, good. And, but it's like knowing they're there yeah. is kind of the biggest thing for me. And there is definitely a lot of placebo there effect really is. in all this stuff, including like these panic attack things, because you panic about not having them, yeah, even if you don't take. Like I've, I've completely forgot. I do. I still do occasionally mm-hmm. to take a pill because I take a, a one milligram twice a day, right? Right. In the morning and afternoon. Or night, I've completely forgot, and only when I re- later remember the next day. Oh damn, I didn't take my pill out. Then all of a sudden, my palms are sweaty. Yes, and knee, knees then weak, arms are heavy. Yeah. Sweater on my skin. Right. <laughs> yeah, my spaghetti's <laughs> nervous. <laughs> yeah, or, only, or, then, only then, rabbit, be rabbit. That's, there you go. <laughs> only <Get> then uh, <laughs> do you really worry about yeah. it. Yeah, and then I'll, you just then go. To, over. And as soon as you take one. You're good. So a lot of it's mental, and there's mental issues there and all that stuff. And the dependent, but see, I that's why I've always I don't know why, but I've just never liked taking anything unless mm-hmm. it's like I said, I'll take an Advil if I got a bad headache or whatever. Um, but I, that's because of that feeling, like you, like I don't if I don't need this, I'm not going to take. I, I'm I'm almost stupid about it. To Dude, a fault. no. Look, the first thirty years of my life was like that. Yeah, like totally against anything. Yeah. I'm like, if I can take tough this out, yeah, I'm gonna. Do I mean, it. I I had two and, kidney stones. Um, and by the time I got back into a room, you know, because the first, the first time, both times, okay, it's still there. It's still hurting like a motherfucker. I'm waiting for hours. By the time I get back in there, it's already dropped out into my bladder. The pain's gone instantly. Right. Then they gave me a shot. Yes. I never took anything during the whole day, yeah. both of them. And that's the second sucks. time. Because it would have been nice to have something yeah, while if, it's if passing. I, if, if, I'm, if I walk in there and they give me a shot, I'll be good until yeah. it's gone. But they, do, they don't 
they want to confirm it. They do these scans and shit. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and the second one was a little bigger. And he's like, I'm so glad you came in because this is a pretty big one. You know, I got to watch it. It might have to get it out of there and whatever. Ooh. I'm like, do whatever you got to fucking do. But because I'd been through it and almost had that mental kind of anger towards it or whatever it is, I was walking out of there, walking out and smoking in the parking lot and shit. And I wasn't even supposed to be. But me walking got that damn thing dropped down. And again, by the time I got to the room, I went in there. They give you a basket when you go pee. Thing shoots out in the back. Because there's no, by the way, there's no pain there. There's certain kinds that there are. Right. The pain ends when it drops into your bladder out of your kidney. That's, that's the line. That's what I've heard. That's when it, it's over. And then you fit instantly. But like here's you the said, problem. Going to sleep. Yeah. Exhausted you, and everything. Because uh, yeah. the, fir the first time I was in there, it was so bad. I puked in their sink and they were like surprised. I'm like, I came here with a fucking kidney. I tried yeah. to tell you. And they don't believe you. How bad you're hurting because they never See, felt it. Well, Chris, and then as soon as it ended, I fell out on the table. Didn't even know it. Think about what you're saying. There's a good chance that they thought you were faking to get that, pills. That's what I'm telling you. I really I good. I, they held off of you because look, <laughs> this is not. I am not trying to wage war against the medical community. I yeah. am trying to build a bridge. I'm trying to talk about these things. So that when you, let's say, I, we know, we just know that there are nurses who are probably going, got another person who's mm -hmm. broke their arm, you know, or, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Or got a kidney stone in room nine, right. you know, Not, uh, rolling their eyes and shit because there's so many people trying to get pills. I've heard of people smashing their own hand with a hammer to get pain pills. So don't get me wrong. I yeah. understand them being jaded. I, I get it. I get it. And but and when you're in there in actual pain, you don't think about none of that shit. Right. Um, because that's one of those things where a kidney stone. I don't give a knock me the fuck out. But, yeah. Until it passes, and then I'm good. But yeah, I mean, the second time it was like, uh, I mean, I remember specifically. Come, you know, it was hours of waiting out there, and then hours of back there, and you're in a room, and you're just pacing. You can't get, you can't, because it's so bad. And I'm, I like I said, the second time, I'm walking out and smoking. I'm just literally like looking out, and walk out in parking lot, and then walk back into my room. <laughs> and I did that probably 15 times because you can't stay still. I can imagine you can't, and it, otherwise you're on the because the first time was fetal position on the floor. Yes, but you don't. Advil ain't going to help. No. Um, but then again, by the time they do, oh, okay, let's go let's go check for real. They do this scan and see this, uh, I guess, ultrasound, whatever, and see that it's in there, and it's pretty big. Then they come with a shot, but by the time they even got there, yes. I'm already sleeping because it's done drop. See, how similar is that? I mean, seriously, it yours happened in one day, mm -hmm. but it's like, remember, it, it we had to get the ultrasound, yep. you know, and that was my MRI moment right. that took two years. Um, there is one thing that I did fail to mention um, prior to me going to treatment this last time for a week. I was terrified that I was going to overdose because what happened at the UFC mm. – and I didn't know, like, now I'm taking something that I know could be very powerful. So I'm taking just a tiny bit, almost like I drew on that paper for you. Yeah. Because I didn't dot. have my buddy here to take it and test it and tell me how much to take. So now I'm all alone, yeah. scared to death, but didn't want to go through that shit again. So I'm sick. I stay sick, like very bad sick. And I'm like, why am I still withdrawing? So I would take a little more and then I'm sick. And then like a few days later of me still being sick, I'm going, oh my God, I'm not withdrawing. I'm overdosing. Like, uh, right. you know, yeah, cause yeah, I've yeah. been taking so much. And I went to the emergency room and I was, had COVID. Right. <laughs> Right, dude. Do you know the relief that washed over me when they came in and said I was positive for COVID yeah. and gave right. me medicine? And COVID knocked me for a fucking loop. 
But that's how similar that shit is to withdrawing that I was thinking I was withdrawing and couldn't get my dosage right. So then I, when I, when I came over me, when I stayed sick after I knew I had been taken more and more and more, when that thought came over me that maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not withdrawing, but I'm overdosing. <clears throat> I haven't been that scared in a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but trying to get help is what I've been pushing in these three videos yeah. is so hard. It's way harder than you think. So if you think about this, I was a 50 year old man sleeping three days in a parking lot only to be told, here's two numbers call. Yeah. To get with the no connection to, to each other, no connection. So then I call, leave a message on the answer machine. Do not hear from them for three days. So just think about that. I, to me, feel like I'm an addict who almost has their shit together. But what about these people who are straight up junky, who need help then? Yep. Who who has a tolerance that, you know, is fentanyl. Like their drug of choice is straight up fentanyl. They need help now. And it's way harder than you think. Even if you have people around you supporting you. Yep. It is so much harder than it should be. I yeah, think we're losing way too many people. Yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, <clears throat> the overall arching theme here is it's easy to get addicted, you know, and I know, you know, now it's more of a, a they're, they, they watch it, watch mm -hmm. for it more now for sure, no doubt about it. But the people that get you addicted, to, you know, again, it's not, I'm not trying to sound like they're all evil medical <laughs> professionals or nothing, but, they, you know, to some degree, and then when somebody actually steps up and says, I got a problem. Yes. Uh, well, we can't help you because of this or because of this. And by the way, when you do get help, you know, you come in here, hey, we can give you this shot, by the way. And uh, with this shot, you ain't got to take nothing. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you do anyway. And by the way, you get one more, you'll probably be completely done. Uh, okay, cool. Let me get a shot. Cool. Here's your first one. Let's go get a second one. We don't do that here. What? Yeah. What? I mean, the there's everybody's got a, a you know like a a piece of the pie. Let me add this. You know, and it's so fucking <clears throat> weird, man. Where I go see my doctor every month is this really nice building in Ballantyne. Right. He told me they will not allow him to put a sign on the outside. It's addiction ballot. treatment. It's Ballantine. Of yes, course. it's all about how things. And that's look. the most addicted people in the fucking city, right, dude? I'm telling you that right and, now. And I'm telling you, we're talking about a very richy, richy area. That's yes, in Charlotte. Yeah, and they are embarrassed that they're helping people, which is that that is so weird to me that you put on their addiction specialist, addiction treatment, or whatever. They don't want that sign on the outside of their building, right? To see that they're helping people, right? It's know? some private thing, and it's like you, you got to hide what you do. You got to hide it. It makes it sneaky. It, yeah, it, that's it, already ingrained it, into it, you, exactly. Too. And it, that don't make you feel any better because I had to drive around the block a couple times to find the place. Right? There's no signs, and yeah. um, it's a nice office building, but I want to say I think that this is a billion dollar idea. But I would love to create an app or somebody out there create an app for addicts yeah. where you literally put in there what you're on, how much you take, how old you are and how tall and how much you weigh and all this stuff. And you're, you're straight up honest with it. And then it links you with, with the you know a place close to you that has good reviews and the reviews are from the addicts themselves yeah and, yes and not i mean you have because they're going to be straight up honest about how this place is and i think if those people had to 
really justify what their website says, right? Things would be a little different. Yeah. And how you're treated, are you treated like a human? Are you treated like a you know an animal just being run through something? Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of those places work, but you know, like how quick did they respond to you? When you called and left a message saying, I need a bed, yep. how quick were you responded? Were you turned down because of your insurance? You know, were you turned down because you live too far away? <laughs> like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Yeah. Well, that should and be my choice if I drive that you, far. You know, I, I told my doctor, my primary, I said, look, I have told my children, they're grown. I've told them that I have told you that I am taking stuff with fentanyl in it. Mm -hmm. I've tested it. I'm telling you now, I need help. And I just want you to know that they know that you know I need help. Right. And what I'm taking. And that didn't move him in any way, Chris. I'm telling you, when I said in the last one that he doesn't show compassion at all, he doesn't. He looks at this like it's a choice. Like, yeah. And and don't get me wrong. I understand why people think that. Maybe ten years ago, right? But there's so much more understanding yes, of it now. So many people have kind of like me have kind of survived it. My story has not been written yet. What if my job falls apart? I lose my insurance. This doctor doesn't want to see me. There's so many things. Why somebody? <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice gets like this. <laughs> well, we're yeah, okay. we're we're two and a half. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah. You'll probably trim a little bit off of it. Not but, really. <laughs> but why? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Why somebody who doesn't have a doctor? who doesn't have insurance can't walk into a facility in 2024 in the United States of America, whether it's, you know, some government facility like the health department or wherever, why is there no place they can walk into and go, I'm an addict. I think I might die. If I continue on the course I'm on, yep. I'm ready for help. You should be able to walk into any doctor's office on any street in any city and say that. Yeah, I mean. And get help. And again, without, I haven't put a lot of thought into it, obviously, and, you know, it could change your mind, but it, if, if it's looked at like any other fucking ailment. Yes. It would be on the menu. Which, by the way, I literally think that this whole this whole health care, cross state lines, insurance scams, all this other bullshit is a whole other story, but it's part of it. Yeah. Like, why if why is uh and it's and it's crony capitalism to some degree everybody wants a piece of the pie like the shot thing right you can just if if this one facility dealt with that it's all right there in the same spot there's no confusion there's no oh I need to communicate with these people over here oh and then the third office by the way is where you actually go get it yeah all that nonsense because somebody came in over here and said oh we can get a piece of this pie too and then oh well we'll get a piece of the pie too and they all you know what I mean? So it's all compartmentalized instead of it just is. under one fucking roof. Mm -hmm. I should be able to walk in any doctor's office and go, okay, my fucking arm, whatever I did at work, an x-ray costs 50 bucks. Okay, I can do that out of pocket. You know, and then and on down the line. And there's some starting private practices starting to do that, by the way. My cousin Eric just told me and you about his new doctor, and it's very similar. He's got his own in-house insurance, essentially. Yeah. It's like a monthly fee. If you choose to pay it, you can. You don't have to. You can just pay out of pocket a la carte, you know. That's awesome. That's what it should be. Yeah, I agree. But this idea that <clears throat> you come out of this place and, you know, there's a plan, but you got to go through more hoops. Yes. Um, to get the shot is fucking ridiculous to me. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if I don't know if it's changing or now, that, you know, there's a lot more awareness on this shit or not, but I'm, I can only go by your your experience and what we know is <clears throat> i could stay on subutex the rest of my life yeah i could and i'd be fine i, I could work 
I could buy a house. I could do all this because I did all of it on Subutex. They need to come up with the final step. Yeah. That is implemented and it's easy because what happened is this wave of addiction swept the country. Mm-hmm. And I think it called all the all the physicians to reel a little bit and go, holy shit, it's like zombies. Like the zombie apocalypse has happened. Really? And they're coming after us because we have a prescription pad. Okay. I feel like once they started getting people on Suboxone and Subutex and Methadone and whatever, it's like I said before, they're like, yeah, I'm glad right. that's over with, but it, that's not no, over. It's not because that it's just like anything that, like you said, you went through it several times that can end somehow that prescription and, or that whatever. And you don't want that. Uh-uh. So you need to get the person you, back. Yes. And I will tell you, there is a Ibogaine treatment that you go out of the country for. You go to Mexico and you take this Ibogaine route. It is a hallucinogenic. And if you trip on this for about eight hours, they monitor you the whole time. They put these like VR goggles on you or something and headphones that plays this music. Mm -hmm. And you go through this spiritual journey and this Ibogaine resets your opiate receptors to their pre-addiction state. Now, think about that. I would get my opiate receptors reset all the way back to 2009 when I had never taken a pain pill in my life. Right. That's a big freaking deal. Huge. And because right now, if 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 you and I get in our vehicle, we're on a trip together, say to the mountains, and we're in a horrible wreck and we're both broken up. Well, I'm not going to be able to get help from pain medicine that they would normally give somebody. Right. You would get relief. Right. Because of my tolerance and the subutex that I'm taking. Like it, I'm not, I'm already doped up to a degree. You know what I mean? And that's not cool to me. Yeah. I don't dig that knowing that where my body's at all the time. I don't, I'm, I feel trapped and I don't like it. Yeah. And so I'm considering that I, that I began therapy cost nine grand to go there and do that. But yeah. people, I think they say with heart issues and blood pressure issues, I think they worry. Yeah. About there's uh, yeah. And, and it doesn't make any money here. So that's the problem. But again, yeah, I think, you know, you're close, and it's it's right there to to get the physical peel thing away and out of the out of the question and the shot thing where you, like you said, you end up no more like rituals, mm-hmm. you know, chopping and breaking off and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it, and just be done with all of it. I think that's the, that's the key. And people, I you know, just remember that. Oh, I mean, oh, sorry. And, you know, that's where I think maybe therapy or whatever, I, I don't know. Because like you mentioned the app, right? They got all these therapy apps now. That's a new thing. You can call, you can get on an app and choose different doctors and it's licensed therapists and you can talk to them um, through Skype and all kinds of stuff and even just text back and forth. So they have the, 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 the technology is there for all that. But I was going to say is um, the mentality to go back to like you like I am now still, but like you said you were for thirty years, where you don't need to take something every time there's something something hurting or right. whatever. That's the mentality, right? Yes. To get back to right, and and that is what used to you know piss my mom off is I wouldn't take things. Mm-hmm. She would always try to give me a pill, you know, and ultimately my mom overdosed and passed away at 52 and I feel bad because she never knew I had any kind of issue. I hadn't even had my neck surgery when she passed away. Right. And 
she just knew that I was hurt and they were trying to figure it out at the time. So, yeah. Um, lost my cousin, my first cousin, he passed away in his parents' bathroom, my aunt and uncle. They had to sell their house because they could not go in their damn bathroom without seeing his body laying there on the floor. And I mean, this is happening all over this country, guys. We're humans. I mean, people at least used to love all these addicts. And I see the videos you do. I don't know what those people are on that are like standing up and leaning backwards and all that. Like, are they on so much of the, what I'm on or is it a totally different drug? Uh, yeah, I can't no educate idea. you on that, but they started somewhere. And maybe if there was an easy help, you know, an easy route for them to receive help before they got to that point. Yep. I don't, I feel bad for all these addicts now. And, and I know I hate that it took me going through it, but honestly, like Chris, I'm sure you have more sympathy for addicts now that you've watched me and I've opened up to you. And oh, stuff. sure. You sure. know what I mean? Like it's it, easy to it, brush somebody off as oh, they it. just idiots who yeah. choose to take this stuff. I'm not going to give this guy the stop sign five bucks because he might get drugs with it. Well, yeah. you know what? You might be saving him from stealing somebody's catalytic converter or yeah, something. Right. You know? All they wanting is this something to keep them from being sick. Yep. If there, if if we have something that keeps people from being sick, I mean, there's liquor stores on every corner. Yeah, like imagine being an alcoholic, like how tempting it must be to go buy all these places when they're trying to get help. But at least they're there, and but an addict, somebody who needs this to keep from getting sick, <clears throat> that should be readily available. You should easily be. It should not. Yeah, and I, think, I know it's um, a controlled substance, but there's a way to control it and still keep people from stealing and, you know, doing yeah, stuff that's going to kill themselves. What's the countries? There's a couple countries. I'll have to look into it, but I remember seeing it years ago. They've completely legalized everything, and there's these centers where people can go, for example, heroin addicts. They can go there and shoot up safely. It sounds with, dumb, I know, I know but surface, I, I don't, but I don't I know the that. results of those. I need to I look don't into either. that, but I, would, I know they did it. But at least... They're not taking the, a shot, a hot shot, you know, that's going to kill them. Yeah, they got clean and stuff yes, and all that not shit. not going to get so. hepatitis. And, and at least until they can get the help they need. And look, there are people that there's no saving. They've crossed some point in time yeah. and they don't want help. Yep. I'm talking about the people that are worth, that do think they're worth fighting for. Yeah, I mean, if if you come to a realization, you got an issue. That's a, that's the you know that's always been right the first step in uh, admitting to a, uh, admitting you have a problem. If people are looking for help, it needs to be there, uh, to, you know, to some degree. And again, I get the skepticism and all that Same. stuff that goes along with that. But there's there's some kind of you know it's no different from you know I go to the hospital because I fell out in the backyard and broke my leg. They can confirm that with an X ray. There's something that can confirm you know, a, te a blood test, whatever, this is real. This is not just somebody faking it, whatever. You know, all that stuff needs to be worked out. And again, not so damn compartmentalized where, yeah. you know, 50 different people have their hands in the fucking, in, in the system, you know, dipping. If it's an issue, like right at the ER, okay? Like yeah. if people are coming to the ER and they're fucking it up for everybody else and all the doctors know it and all the nurses know it, an admin knows it, that there are drug addicts coming in, fucking it up for people who are really sick and mm -hmm. hurt, mm -hmm. then maybe we could make a wing or something of the ER, a little window, a little room that is a safe place for people to come off the street and, and go, hey, I'm withdrawing. I just need a little bit of help, and I'll sign up for any follow-up shit you need. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you can blacklist me from coming here again if I don't follow up, you know, but yeah, just please help me now. Yeah. And uh, and then get into a system. And and, these pe and there's a way to get, I know there's a way to do an app or whatever. You get on this yeah. app 
and then people are reaching out to you. Hey, bud, you know, you signed up for this stuff. Are you ready? We, you know, we're ready to help you. Yep. We got a van that'll come get you. You know, I don't know. I think it. I think it could. It could work. It could save some lives. And uh, again, not everybody can be saved. I know that. Yeah, for sure. But guys, I mean, there, there's definitely you know the bad apples who don't give a fuck. They did it on purpose. And yes. sure, and there's a, there's a place for ridicule for shit like that. That's for right. sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the I would. I mean, I would. We be willing to bet that the vast majority is stuff like that getting hurt. You know, it starts with simple. You know, it hurts bad i need something whatever and they don't plan this shit it's not like a big party you know or some bullshit but no. you know if you frown down on people who are addicted to pills and all that shit don't don't take your ass to the liquor store because that kills more people than anything oh my gosh yes i mean it's completely legal and fine and it's just you know people smile but you know again it's not it's just uh it's just a different it's the stigma attached to it because of the zombies in the streets. Yeah. Because they started on, like you said, they probably started the same way in most cases. Yes. And it just got progressively worse, and Took they didn't a- have that help. Yeah. And they decided to cross some line. And and then once you do, once your body you do, says, yep. hey, you're going to get me this. From now and on. And it's hard to describe. And I've, I've thought about that as we've done these things. Uh, it's I think I've tried and I've done decent, but it's it's not a desire. It's not a craving. Mm. It's a you can't help it. And I hope people understand that. And I wish I did a long time ago because I would have had a lot better conversations with my mom. And uh, I'd, I just feel better because she's gone. And I would feel better if those conversations hadn't went like they did. Yeah. But I didn't understand it. I thought it was a, des- a craving. Yeah. And it's not. It's it's something you can't control. That's an important distinction, yeah. I think so. so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't plan on having all the answers and shit, obviously. Right. But, uh, I mean, uh, let me just say, I mean, look, I, I know we were texting while you went to that place. Um, I'm proud of you. It's uh, it's It's been a long journey, or if you want to call it a journey. <laughs> You've watched me lose a lot. I, I have. I've watched you now gain it back. I'm, um, doing, I'm doing okay. And you're doing good, and you, I think you're right there. And, again, this goes back to kind of what we mentioned before about these type of things. When you have purpose – and something to focus on, put energy into, and whatever that is, that helps with all this kind of stuff, like everything, like whether it's that book or you know your hobby or your job that you love, whatever it is, a relationship that helps give you purpose. Purpose is everything. It goes always back to purpose or or that. I've, type of, you I've know, got to share this. This is like in my whole journey. This is such a big thing to me. Like, I'm deeply, deeply scarred by this. And it seems petty. But during that time when I was running out of gas <laughs> a lot, <laughs> I I went to my uncle, to my aunt and uncle's house, and I, I asked if they could help me with some money. I have never asked them for money. He knew because I was open that I had a problem. I had lost my family by then. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know in his mind, he was like, I'm not going to give somebody a lot of money that um, is just going to go spend it on drugs. Right? Right. Yeah. I get that, but he gave me $20 and said, that's all I can give you, and don't come back and ask for more. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I'm like, like that has still hurt me. And we're talking, that's eight years ago that happened. And and I'm (laughs) thinking, $20. Twenty dollars. What is that? A happy meal and uh, you know <laughs> half a tank of gas or I, I don't, at the time. I not don't know. these days. <laughs> Quarter tank of gas. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Like it, you may as well just not give me anything. Yeah. So like 
What I hope is that one day the stigma is like we're still humans. Even in our lowest moment, we're still your your loved one. And I don't know that if you if I know they had money, like plenty of money. Like I'm sleeping in my car some nights and I don't know. I don't know. I just that hurt so bad. Yeah. Hurt twenty damn dollars. Hey, I shouldn't have been in the position, I get it, but tough well, love. Uh, that could have caused me, you know, if I was somebody with a weaker moral character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Putting yeah. me out on the street with just twenty dollars. Yeah. But I was gonna just suffer. But other people, you know, it, it, it causes bad things to happen. Yeah, there's definitely a time and place for tough love for sure. That's mm -hmm. certainly a part of a, we were talking about that earlier a, a lot. Bit, but yeah. yeah, I mean, there's you know, you, you know, and I get it. Look, it's hard. But we to have know. feelings, is I guess what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. I can't help that hurt me so bad. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, some people are. are not lucky enough to have any family or help or any kind of system. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the, that's the worst situation. I'm, I'm assuming. But, but thank you guys for sticking around you know, for three, yeah, we got three a, episodes, three episodes. Uh, and this one's, this was a long one. hours and uh, it was like a roller coaster. Yeah, wasn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you, I, I hope it makes you feel better to get it out there. I'm it glad does. you finally did. Cause I know we, you talked about it for a while. Wanting to, you know, yeah. talk about it openly and all that stuff. And I said, whenever you're ready. Was, I wanted the end to be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the yeah. plan was, hey, I'll be yeah, off the that's, shots. That's you right. Know? But so you did. That's the, you know. To once be, the shots are over, we'll be, do this. To be fair, you know, you that is, that that you got your first shot. And that was mm -hmm. whatever. Um, With the weird part about, that's, that's what I mean about, you know, some of the, the broken there there is help there that you finally got and then and then you ended up right back on at least again control within a better situation um remember the dude that set himself on fire and shot himself with a gun and said hmos are bullshit or whatever yeah like insurance has killed a lot of people yes yes absolutely it's a complete scam for the most part that's a whole another thing but like, that's definitely a big part of it yes insurance has more control over you than your doctor, Absolutely. your health care than your doctor. A hundred percent. They have, I don't know how they have say over that. I don't, like, oh no, he wants you to do this, but no, we're going to try this first. Yep. Yep. It's, it's so fucking weird, man. Mm -hmm. That's insurance. That's, that's a whole giant. Yeah. Debacle clusterfuck. And you know, a whole <clears> other <throat> podcast to even talk about it. Um, that's a big a big thing in this you weird can't ass. Insure the dead. Mm -mm. We've got to do something to keep our country alive. There's too many people overdosing every freaking day. So let's fix this yeah. together. And I, and I think a lot of people, like you said, don't are not touched by it, or they they look like you said down their nose at people like that. It's, they're just like. Just let them take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. It'll it'll work itself out, you know. Natural selection, you've heard that before, and you know, kind of shit. Instead of having some kind of compassion for somebody, yeah. But, now, I get it. Like, you know, yeah. Who wants to jump into a relationship? Like, so right now, I have just, you know, fucked myself. Yeah. Like <laughs> yes. all the shit I have told, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, who's Want, gonna want to get into a relationship, something serious, <clears throat> with somebody who has admitted to all this stuff. But and I'm here to tell you, it's safe. It's okay as long as you're open. Right. There does not have to be these dark secrets no. between couples. But here's here's the other thing: you already know somebody going through the same shit he has. You already know. I promise you, you do. You do. They yeah. just don't. They're just. They're just operating normal like everybody else. But they just gotta, like you said, you gotta just keep something from not getting sick. You're yep. still working. It's you're still on the DL. in a is exactly. You still in. A, they still in a relationship. They have kids. Mm -hmm. There are people that you see at work. There are people that work on your car. There are people that, in a fucking doctor's office. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. 
Um, but it's just it's just a secret. That's all. And it needs to be addressed. But I love all you guys. Thank you for all the comments. They've really helped me a lot. And I wish we could get more views. But, hey, we got a cool little club, about six, 700 yeah. of us. <laughs> That's right. You know? Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad glad it, glad you did it, man. Glad you got it out there. And hopefully, like I said, if it helps one fucking person, man, or give somebody an idea or a spark or whatever yeah. to change something in some system, somebody that's got some influence or power or technology, whatever it is, whatever can get something going. And, um, again, I think a lot of us, it's, it's so complicated. Nobody's going to have a, a yeah. good answer because insurance, like you said, intertwined with everybody reaching their hand in the pot because there's a profit from it and all this kind yeah. of shit, man. So it's it's not easy, but um, the first step is seeing people as human again, you know, like you said, because it ain't no different from an alcoholic or anything, you know, sugar addiction. No, food, that's right. It's, it's not different except for you can immediately die, you know, but yeah. it will, it's just a slower death. I mean, it's, it's all the same thing. It really is. So, hey, there's, there's some one. There's a last donut you eat. That, you know what I mean right. for everybody. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. And you never know when that is. That's right. But Thank all right, you. good. Anything I, else? I, I, Got it all out there. I feel like it's all out there. Yeah, now. there'll be some one thing you'll. Forget. There will be. <laughs> you can mention. As they can tell, I keep going. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, this. we're we're late as but shit tonight. Right. But we'll next time we'll get back to overtime and 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 yeah. maybe we'll tell that one I'm a story cross too. Right now. Yeah. And no. sore throat. Yeah. But what do we do? Three hours? Yeah, almost. Wow. Yeah, I think so. If uh, you're still here, getting close. You're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank, thank you for hanging you. out. For uh, that's a, that's this is probably the longest one we've ever done. I think so, probably. But all righty, well, we'll wrap it up, and uh, we'll come back next week with something fresh and new, and <laughs> not all the doom and gloom. <laughs> but all right, Shit we'll. Uh, in a bucket. Yeah, thanks again to Jeb Jenkins. Jeb Jenkins, coming a lord on uh, channel members. Thank there. you so much, and uh, she'll enjoy some overtimes. And we got some more overtimes coming. It's just it's too damn late tonight, but we'll get to it. All right, let's get out of here. We'll yes. let it fade to black.